እሺ በድጋሜ እንዴት አደረጃችሁ YouTube ላይ እንደተከታተሉንም ሰዎች እዚህ ማዳራሽ AI ተገኝታችሁ የነጣችሁ ነዛሪው ፕረዘንቴሽናችን ያ መቶ የመጨረሻ ሌክቸር ነው የሚሆነው የነገመረው ፕረዘንቴሽን በዶክተር ሜሪና ፕሮቪች የሚቀርብላት ይሆናል ከዛ ቀጥሎ ዶክተር ፍጹም ከAI የሚያቀርብልን ሲሆን በመጨረሻ በዶክተር ዋሲውን የሚቀርብልን ፕረዘንቴሽን ነው አብራችሁን ተከታተሉን አላችሁ በተቻለ መጠን አሁንም ያላችሁት ወደፊት ታጠጋበሉ ነው ወደዚህ መሃል ያለውን ሙሉ ፕሮግራሙ ይሄደ ሰዎች ጆይን አይደርኩናል ኦንላይን ያላችሁት ተከታተሉን አላችሁ ዩቲዩብ ላይ ኦኬ እና ከል ካልኳችሁ ቀጥታ ወደ ፕረዘንቴሽኑ እንጀምራለን አመሰግናለሁ Okay good good morning salamat salamat how are you so thank you very much for coming and many thanks to um uh, Ethiopian Civil Science Society for the invitation as well and also for running all the public lectures uh, during this summer i was really happy when i saw the initiative um but uh, all the lectures don't have any sense without all of you uh who are here and then people who are uh and people who are uh connected through the through the youtube channel as well so um so this talk will be about galaxy structures yes uh, um i'm um, um my name is Ikhtiar i'm Irena Povich uh i'm an assistant professor at uh, uh the, the former Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute and now we changed the uh, uh, Space Science and Geospatial Institute and i also work as a associate researcher uh, collaborating with the institute of astrophysics of andalusia in spain and also as a um as a honorary lecturer at uh, in uganda at barara university of science and uh, technology and in my field of astronomy uh, uh, is extragalactic astronomy so i study galaxies and i study different things about galaxies and one of uh, those uh, uh, parts that we are studying Uh, is related with galaxy structures uh, and it's been now for uh, almost 15 years that I've been dealing with uh, galaxy structures in, uh, in my uh, along my research to different collaborations projects uh, work with students and so on so I will try to make a brief summary and you can please interrupt me at any time so if you have any question please raise your hand if something is not clear or if you have any additional question beside of what I uh, say don't uh, uh, don't uh, have any problem that you interrupt me and just raise your hand okay so uh, just to remind us a bit i will start before we start with the galaxy structures and why actually the galaxy structure or what we call morphology is so important um i will uh, uh, and with this slide i would just like to introduce uh, us where we are in the universe when we speak about the world of galaxies So you know that uh, we are all the earth is our uh, home uh, we are all living uh, here uh, and then the earth is inside uh, the solar system just one of the eight planets that we have uh, among eight planets that i mentioned but then also many other small bodies satellites uh, and so on and then that uh, once we go out of the solar system we find ourselves uh, in the neighborhood of um, um many many stars that are there that are uh, uh, brought together with their own gravity making the bigger uh, uh, object that we call a galaxy and how do we call our galaxy what is uh, the galaxy that is our home yes milky way so our galaxy is the uh, uh, milky way we can see it here uh, we will come back to that but then uh, is milky way the only galaxy that we have in the universe what do you think Who thinks that it is? Who thinks that it is not? Okay. And I suppose the rest you are not sure. So Milky Way is not the only galaxy in the universe. So once we go out uh, uh, from the Milky Way, we actually find ourselves with billions and billions of other galaxies that are there in the universe. And that is the the field of research where I am uh, with my students, many colleagues as well. 
and we are trying to understand the properties of galaxies. So different properties of galaxies related with their mass, related with their size, related with their chemical composition, how many stars are there, what kind of stars do they have, if they are old, if they are young, uh, if they are active, non-active, uh, and so on and so on. In what kind of environments they live. So all of these are some of the questions that we are uh, that we are studying and also trying to understand how these different properties are changing with the cosmic time as the universe evolves. So since the Big Bang, when the universe started until nowadays. And then one of the things that we are also studying are the, the galaxy shapes uh, or morphology or the structure of the galaxies. Is that clear? Yes? Okay, perfect. Uh, and then, so here, this picture is from simulations, but actually when we go to the observations, we can see very similar structures. So you can see that here we have uh, the, um, uh, the how the universe looks like on the large structure. So basically, if you imagine yourself going out from the universe and you look, what is the distribution of all the galaxies, all the matter that is there in the universe, that is what we call the, the large structure in the universe. So we can see that actually galaxies are also grouped. They are not normally isolated. They are also grouped. They are attracted by their own gravity and they make bigger systems like groups of galaxies, clusters, superclusters. And here you can see all of these uh, big uh, superclusters that then also have a lot of dark matter that is there that uh, I will not go now into the, uh, into the, the details. Uh, because it's a bit, but later on for the questions, please ask whatever you want. So basically, when uh, uh, the, um, the deep uh, study about the world of the galaxies uh, started, actually, the, the, the galaxies, uh, studying the galaxies, we can say that we already uh, had uh, uh, significant observations at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, but actually, we can say that the big revolution in the study of galaxies came with the Hubble Space Telescope. Did you hear about Hubble Space Telescope? You did? Don't be shy, just say loudly. You did? Yes? Okay, perfect. So the Hubble Space Telescope, if you didn't hear, you can see it here. It is called uh, space because it is not here on the Earth. It is really uh, uh, in the space. It's been uh, launched in the um, in, uh, 90s. And uh, here you can see uh, the here as well, and here the Hubble Space Telescope with uh, people who are fixing it as well, uh, the astronauts that are there in the space. So basically when the Hubble Space Telescope uh, was launched, for the very first uh, time, because uh, uh, suddenly we were able to obtain much, much better data. So the uh, images with uh, uh, much uh, better resolution, and for the first time we were able to go deeper into the space. So to, to detect, what I mean by when I say to go deeper into the space, I mean to detect those galaxies and sources, stars, uh, stellar elements, and so on, that are faint. Because when we observe from the Earth, we have atmosphere that is absorbing part of the light. Um, and then for those sources that are fainter, we have uh, more difficulties to detect them. So basically what astronomers did with the Hubble Space Telescope when it was launched was that they pointed in the constellation of Ursa uh, Maior, the, the big um, uh, deal that you can uh, uh, see from Ethiopia as well. Uh, they pointed the telescope in this very, very small region of the sky. And they observed during 10 days. During these 10 days, they were taking images, and here you can see 340 uh, exposures. So 340 images have been taken during 10 days from this small part of the sky, and then all of these data were put together so that you can increase the signal. Uh, and what has been observed uh, and obtained is this picture that you can see here that we call Hubble Deep Field. So what I didn't say is that when the, the astronomers pointed the telescope to this part of the sky, before uh, uh, these observations, uh, people thought that this part of the sky is empty because we didn't have uh, any information from uh, there. And then when we got the uh, data with Hubble, it's been seen not only that this part of the sky is not empty, but that there are thousands and thousands of galaxies that are there in the universe. So basically, uh, this, uh, 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 this data and this kind of technique that we call deep surveys 
uh, uh, open the revolution in uh, studying the properties of the galaxies and in extragalactic astronomy research that, uh, that uh, many of us are, are doing. So what can you see when, uh, when you look into this picture, what can you say? Are all galaxies the same or they are different? Hmm? Please. Perfect. Perfect. So you went even a step further. So your your friend and colleague uh, said that uh, um, uh, they are different because they have different shapes, and that's correct. So we can see here that some of the galaxies uh, are more um, ellipsoidal, others are a bit more spheroidal. Um, uh, our colleague said that uh, some of those, let me see, uh, have uh, like a spiral structure, like the one that you can see here, uh, or the one that we can see here. What else? Beside their shape, what other differences do you see? Hmm? Color, perfect. They have different colors. So we can see that some of those are more bluish, like this one, this one, and the other are have the, the others are more reddish, like this one, this one, or more yellow. No? What else? Hmm? The size, perfect. So some of those we see that they are very, very large, and some of those we see just as a point source. No? So basically, every single point uh, source that you can see in this image is a far away distant galaxy. So now when you speak about uh, uh, size, it can be that the galaxy looks larger because it's nearby than those that are very far away and we see them as just point sources, or it can be that galaxies really have different sizes, which actually is the case. So what else? What else you can, uh, you can say? What about brightness? Are they all having the same brightness? Hmm? Yes or no? They don't. So we see some of those, even those that are nearby, we see that some of those are uh, brighter, others are fainter. Those that are uh, just the small dots there, we see them already as very, very faint sources. No? What about the environment? The environment is also different. So we have those galaxies that uh, look like uh, they are living in more um, um, uh, in a more rich environment, with many other galaxies being uh, uh, close and, or nearby, and then other galaxies that are a bit more isolated, like this one here or this one here. So all of these things, uh, for, for the very first time, we managed to observe with this. Um, uh, with the, the Hubble Deep Field uh, uh, data. And as I said, this opened actually the revolution for the, the study of, uh, of galaxies. And here we can see what we mentioned previously, that there is a huge diversity uh, in the world of galaxies. Yeah, with this slide, I just want to uh, a bit make, uh, 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 bring closer the diversity in terms of the shape. Uh, as our colleague uh, said, so we have those galaxies where we can see these uh, uh, structures that we call spiral arms, others that uh, have like much more uh, homogeneous, uh, uniform distribution of light and not very strong uh, uh, components. So you can see that there is a huge, huge diversity in galaxy uh, structures. But also when we go to the dynamics, we find uh, different uh, types of dynamics that we can observe in the universe, um, for example, the galaxies can interact. So everything you, all the time, you have to think that in the universe, everything is in the constant evolution. So nothing is a static. Everything is in the constant movement, but also constant evolution. So everything in the universe at some point will be born, uh, stars, galaxies, uh, uh, then uh, these sources will live their life and then finally they will die. And um, uh, and everything is uh, in the constant evolution in the universe. So we can also observe during this evolution uh, uh, among galaxies, we can also observe that the galaxies attract uh, uh, themselves uh, due to their own gravity. They come closer, and then they can even interact, like we can, uh, like uh, uh, as we can see here. And then we can also have the mergers of galaxies. Then we have those galaxies that uh, uh, have very, very, we call them starburst galaxies. So they have a very, very enhanced star formation rate, which means that per year, 
they can generate many, many stars. Like if in, uh, in one galaxy that is a normal galaxy, like our Milky Way, you have between one to three stars that are born per year. In this kind of galaxies, we will expect hundreds of stars to be born uh, in one year. So there is a big, uh, big uh, difference. And we also want to understand what are the properties of these uh, galaxies. Then we have what we call ga uh, active galaxies. And these are my favorite sources in the whole universe because I did my PhD uh, thesis with these sources. And up to now, uh, in the last, uh, since uh, 17 years ago, since I started my research in astronomy, I never stopped uh, studying uh, these uh, galaxies and I'm still amazed uh, about them because they have very, very particular physics uh, that is extremely exotic, many things that we still cannot explain. Uh, physics that on one side is classical, but also relativistic. And in these active galaxies, these are some of the brightest sources that we have in the universe. And they have what we call in their center. Here in the center of these galaxies, we have a supermassive black holes that then are responsible for influencing the evolution, including the structure of the whole galaxy in a very particular way. So we actually want to understand how these galaxies generate these huge energies, uh, uh, how they influence the, the evolution of the galaxies and then the evolution of the universe as, uh, as a whole. And then here you can see uh, what I mentioned previously, you know, just an example of galaxy, different galaxy systems like groups, uh, uh, clusters, uh, or the, this is one example of the galaxy cluster where we have many, many galaxies uh, brought together uh, due to their own gravity. So basically, uh, uh, in, uh, in my research, uh, what uh, mainly I'm focused on is studying the active galaxies, the morphological properties of the galaxies, the star formation in galaxies, and then also the properties of galaxies in, in galaxy clusters. But today we will focus only on the structure. So when we come to the galaxy now, what are the components of the galaxy? And here we come to the definition of the galaxy. You know, what is the definition of the galaxy that we use in astronomy? So we can say that the galaxy, actually, would any of you like to say that? What is the galaxy? What do you think? Yes, please. The group of stars, perfect. What else? What else you could add? To make a definition a bit more complete. Would you like to add something? You also raise your hand. You wanted to say the same. Okay, perfect. So perfect. It is the group of stars, but then you can see here that uh, in uh, the what uh, what our colleagues uh, said correspond to the first part. So we have the body that has tens to hundreds of billions of stars, depending on the type of the galaxy, the size, the mass of the galaxy, because we have from the dwarf galaxies up to the giant galaxies. Do you know how many stars are there in the Milky Way? Yes. How many? Actually, it's uh, 200 to 400 billions of stars. So you, you, uh, it's just multiplying by, uh, by 100, but you were close. So that's uh, the important is that we are talking about billions of stars. And in the Milky Way, just because we are still, we are inside the Milky Way, it's hard uh, to know the exact number of stars. And this is still one of the, the open questions. So we have the, the, the large number of stars, including the, the stellar uh, uh, clusters, but then also, you remember at some point I said that uh, everything in the universe uh, uh, is born at some point and will die at some point as well. So the stars die as well. And when the stars die, what we have are the stellar remnants. So what kind of stellar remnants we have? The white dwarfs, neutron stars, the black holes as well. And they also uh, uh, make a part of the galaxy. So we can say that the galaxy is a system, uh, the massive source uh, 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 that is a system of... Uh, uh, stars and stellar clusters, the stellar remnants, the interstellar medium. Why? Because the space that we have between the stars in a galaxy, what do you think? Is it empty or it's not empty? So we said we have Milky Way or any other galaxy. We have tens uh, up to hundreds of billions of stars there. And what about the space between the stars?
So the space between the stars is what we call the interstellar medium. So the medium or the matter between the stars. So that's why we call it interstellar. And that space is not empty. That space is filled by the gas and dust. And actually this gas and dust has a very, very important function because from there is where the new stars and the new planets will be new stars, new planets, the small body satellites and so on will be born at some other point uh, in the future of the universe. And that's how the, the universe worked uh, in the past as well. And then there is also a large amount of what we call nowadays dark matter that we know that it's there, but we still don't know really what the dark matter is made of. And that's one of the open questions. So basically the galaxy is a huge massive system that is made of all of this. But then when we come to the uh, galaxy components in terms of the structure, so what kind of shapes do we have in the, in the galaxy? So what are the principal components? We can say that the principal component when we are dealing with the galaxy structure is um, the central part of the galaxy that we call bulge where we have much, much larger concentration of stars. Then we can have a disk that is uh, uh, this part here where we have lower concentration of stars, but in this, uh, uh, this, we can have different structures like spiral arms, like those structures that you can see here, or even the nuclear box. So this part here. And then the galaxies are uh, have the envelope of gas, dust, uh, stellar, uh, uh, stellar, uh, the stellar clusters as well, that we call ha uh, halo. And then in the center, we have, we know nowadays that basically every single galaxy has a supermassive black hole in the center. And that's what uh, where the, the nucleus of the galaxy is. So basically, when we come to the Milky Way, um, uh, Milky Way uh, is uh, similar to this type of galaxy. So it's a spiral galaxy. Uh, there are several spiral arms in the Milky Way. And basically, if I ask you, um, what would you say? Where we are in the Milky Way? Are we in the center? Or are we in the edge, at the edge of the Milky Way? Or we are somewhere in between? Let us see if there is somebody else. And if not, then... then uh, hmm? Tell me again. Okay, perfect. So your colleague is saying that the, the uh, sun with our solar system, including Earth, is not in the center of the galaxy, is not at the edge, but in one of the spiral arms. So, the others, what do you think? Do you agree with that? So that's correct. That's correct. And here you can see a, a little bit where the position, this is not a real picture. This is just the repro uh, reproduction, but you can see um, uh, where the, the sun with the solar system would be in one of these spiral arms uh, uh, inside the, the Milky Way. And here we can see the Andromeda galaxy. Have you ever heard about Andromeda galaxy? Yes. You will be amazed with uh, so many stars that are there that at the beginning we can't even recognize constellations because there are so many stars that are there uh, uh, in, um, in when we have the dark Ethiopian uh, skies. So if you find Andromeda constellation, you can uh, uh, see uh, with your eye not like this, of course, because this is uh, taken with, uh, with uh, specific instruments, but you can see with your uh, eye a small nebula that is Andromeda galaxy. And this is the nearby, the nearest galaxy, not dwarf galaxy, but the nearest galaxy that is the normal big galaxy similar to our Milky Way. Here you can see a bit uh, 2.5 uh, um, million light years that it's away. And do you know that this Andromeda galaxy and our Milky Way are actually currently approaching each other? So they both have their mass, which means they have their gravity, and they are both so massive and also at a, a short enough distance that with their gravity, they are, uh, um, they are attracting each other, so they are approaching each other. So in, in about four or five billion years from now, these two galaxies will merge. 
So we will basically have the galaxy merger between the Milky Way and Andromeda, and I'll come back uh, later on uh, um, uh, to that point where you will be able to see a bit how this will uh, look like. So besides the components that I mentioned previously, uh, the galaxies can also have many other uh, structures that are not really common, but sometimes we observe them. Like uh, the rings, uh, these uh, jets, uh, different uh, uh, tails, the filaments of star formation, the gas, gas that is there and so on. And we want to understand how all of these different structures are actually formed. So just to, to remind you, when we speak now, from, from now on, when I speak about galaxy structure, I will actually focus only to the optical regime. So what do we see with our eye? But you know from physics that uh, the light, when we speak about light or, or the electromagnetic radiation that in astronomy is the fundamental source of information for us, we don't only analyze the light or the electromagnetic radiation in the visible regime where our eye is sensitive. We also analyze the light across the whole electromagnetic spectrum in high energies like gamma rays, X-rays, in ultraviolet, uh, and then also in infrared, and then also in radio regime. So all of this, I suppose, you already heard about. You know about radio waves because the, the communication systems, the telecommunication systems work all in radio waves. You heard about infrared radiation, uh, or the, the ultraviolet radiation because we are receiving it also from the sun. And then you also heard about high energies like X-rays, gamma rays, because when you go to the doctor um, and if uh, something is broken in our, uh, our body, we will use the X-ray um, uh, radiation and X-ray instruments to get the images of the bones inside our body, correct? So all of these that I mentioned, going from high energies up to radio, uh, are uh, the, the, um, the sources of information for us in astronomy. So why I'm saying that? Because if you now go from one part to another, uh, we get different information from the galaxy, which means that the galaxy structure can also look in a different way in optical and when we go to X-rays or to radio. Is this clear? Hmm? Yes, are you following? Any question up to here? Yes, no, no? Okay, so here is the example of what I was saying. Here you can see one active galaxy that is, you remember those active galaxies that I love so much that are the brightest sources that we have in the universe and have the supermassive black holes in their cell, you know? And they generate tens to thousands of times larger luminosities, energy, than what is uh, our Milky Way, the entire Milky Way. So they have very, very particular features. So uh, you can see now, this Centaurus uh, uh, A galaxy, how this galaxy looks like when we take the image in optical, using the optical telescope, like uh, the one that we have at Entoto. When we take this image in the radio, using the radio telescopes, so like those that we had in South Africa, and then using uh, the X-ray, um, uh, getting the X-ray image with X-ray telescopes. And these telescopes uh, we don't have on the ground because the X-ray emission is absorbed by the atmosphere. So they are always the space-based uh, telescope, telescopes. But what you can see is three different images from the same source, from the same galaxy. And as I said, observed in X-rays, radio, and optical. So if, uh, so if you would see these three images separately, would you say that, would you be able to say that these images come from the same source? Would you be able, visually? No, we would not be able to say to guarantee that this is the same source. Why not? Because the images are so different, especially this one with this one and this one with this one, no? So I will not go now into, into details. We can leave for the questions because there are still many slides. But basically, just what I want to show here with this slide is that when we go from one part of the spectrum to another, we are actually, the, the structure or the form of the galaxy can change. So we can have those uh, uh, components like these relativistic jets that we can observe in radio, but in optical, we don't have any evidence of its existence. 
because this kind of radiation is not detected in optical. It's already at other wave or frequencies. And similar in X-rays. No, we can see in X-rays that we actually do have a, a active galactic nuclei there in the center, and we will not be able to know that from the optical. On the other side, in optical, you can see this evidence of the bulge, the evidence of the disk, and a lot of dust that is there, like these dark clouds, is a dust. The dust that is absorbing the light coming from the stars behind, and that's why we see it uh, dark like this, no? So in, in either radio or X-rays, we cannot uh, get evidences of the existence of the bulge and the disk in the galaxy. Okay, so hope I hope this is uh, this is clear, uh, and this is extremely interesting. Also, how much the space is changing, the 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 view of the space when we go from one frequency to another. But now, from now on, when I speak about uh, morphology and the galaxy structure, we will only focus on optical because the optical is the principal regime that we are using for studying the morphology. So just for you to have in mind. So when we speak about morphology, we have four principal uh, types of galaxies depending on their structure. And these four types are, as our colleague uh, mentioned, we have the elliptical galaxies that you can see here. We have the lenticular galaxies that are those galaxies here, spiral galaxies that are all of those here, uh, here and then uh, irregular galaxies. These four principal types, come from the beginning of 20th century when Hubble observed a larger number of galaxies, uh, so different shapes, and then classified galaxies into these four types. And this for using optical data, optical images and optical telescopes. So these four types we are still using nowadays in our studies as a principal classification that, uh, that we have. Um, so I will now just briefly give a, a very, very briefly, what are the principal characteristics of each of these types? So when we come to the elliptical galaxies, you can see that we call them elliptical because of their shape. So either they are spheroidal or ellipsoidal in shape. So what are the principal uh, properties of these galaxies? Well, the principle is that uh, you can see that in their structure, they have a very, very strong bulge. They have a, a halo, very strong halo as well, but they don't have the galaxy disk, spiral arms, nuclear bars that we mentioned previously, that th this kind of structure can exist. Uh, they also have, uh, in comparison with other types, um, a very small amounts of gas and dust, this interstellar medium. And if you remember, at some point I mentioned that this interstellar medium is very important for the new stars to be born and, uh, and for, the, for the new stars and the planetary systems as well. So if these elliptical galaxies have very small amounts of gas and dust, what do you think? Do they uh, produce many stars or they have very low production of stars? Is it clear my question? No? Okay, so I said that these elliptical galaxies have very, very small amounts of gas and dust. So the interstellar medium that is uh, fulfilling the space between stars, so the quantity of the gas and dust in these elliptical galaxies is very low. So that means then that the uh, production uh, generation of the new stars will be also low in this kind of galaxies. So that means that these kind of galaxies are very old. So most of the stars that we have in elliptical galaxies are already old stars. And that, uh, due to that, also they have much, uh, uh, much more red colors instead of, uh, of blue colors. So when we come to the uh, spiral galaxies, here you can see different types of spiral galaxies. So we have a very, very large diversity of spiral galaxies. How do we separate them? First, uh, in terms of the spiral arms, so how open or uh, close these spiral arms are. So you can see that in some cases we have spiral arms that are very open, and then in other cases, the spiral arms that are much more evolved and more closed. But also there is a classification between those spiral galaxies that don't have this nuclear bar and spiral galaxies that have this uh, nuclear bar coming from the central part. So um, 
what are some of the principal uh, properties? It's a bit opposite from elliptical galaxies. So they have, uh, they do have a, uh, the bulge, but they have a very strong disk. And then they always have the spiral arms in the disk. And sometimes they can have this nuclear bar, as we mentioned. They have large amounts of gas dust, which means that they can produce many, many stars, especially in the disk that is much younger uh, component. And then in the spiral galaxy, we will find both. We will find older stars that are uh, 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 normally, uh, uh, normally uh, concentrated in the central part of the galaxy. And we have younger stars that, are, um, uh, that we can find uh, in the uh, disk of the galaxy. And then what is also interesting uh, for when we are studying spiral galaxies that we always have to think about is their orientation or the inclination. So when we, uh, when we mentioned elliptical galaxies like uh, those here, we said that they are either spheroidal or ellipsoidal. But basically there, the inclination doesn't matter. But when you come uh, to the spiral galaxies, the spiral galaxy have the bulge in the center and then the disk. So depending how the spiral galaxy is orientated toward us, we will measure the properties in a different way. So this is the example. Here you can see three spiral galaxies, but with different orientation. One that is uh, uh, orientated toward us uh, with inclination that is zero, that, that is uh, face on, one that is edge on where we look into the disk of the galaxy directly, and then something that is in between. So this inclination will actually affect, if we now want to measure what is the uh, mass of the galaxy, what is the brightness, what, is, what are the star formation rates, we have to have this uh, inclination into account as well. What about the lenticular galaxies? The lenticular galaxies, I will not spend much time, it's just between the type between elliptical and spiral. So basically they have the properties between elliptical spiral galaxies, which mean, uh, means that they have a strong bulge like ellipticals, but also they have some indications of the disk, not strong disk as spiral galaxies, but some indications. They also have larger amount of uh, uh, younger stars uh, in comparison with elliptical, but the majority of the stars are uh, older population stars. Uh, and then with other properties, they are also a bit in between. However, they are more similar to elliptical galaxies than to spiral galaxies. And they are also a bit, uh, uh, they are also older galaxies than uh, spiral. And then we come to the irregular galaxies and we call them irregular because they don't have any regular structure. So they have very regular shapes. And these galaxies uh, are normally uh, the youngest galaxies that we have uh, in the universe. So they have large amount of gas, dust, uh, new stars that are uh, born. So young stars that are there and stellar clusters. And then there are different types of irregular galaxies that now I will not go into the details because of the time. But here you can see two galaxies. This is the small Magellanic Cloud and large Magellanic Cloud. And both of them are classified as um, irregular galaxies, dwarf irregular galaxies. Have you ever heard about small and large Magellanic Cloud? Any of you? Any of you? You can raise your hand. No? So do you know that our Milky Way has uh, satellite galaxies? So the same as the planet can have a satellite, like our Earth has a moon, and moon is gravitationally attached to the, to the Earth, the galaxies can also have their satellites. So that means that the galaxies, the big galaxies, massive galaxies, can attract by their gravity the small dwarf galaxies. And then these galaxies, we call them satellite galaxies because they are, they are uh, um, uh, participating in the all kinematic dynamic of the principal galaxy and they are there. So um, uh, uh, these, sorry, these two galaxies that we can see here are actually the satellite galaxies of our Milky Way. And unfortunately, from Ethiopia, we cannot observe it. Because, but if you go a bit more to the south, so if you go to South Africa, you go to Zimbabwe, Zambia, uh, Mozambique, uh, so just to the southern part of Africa or uh, Latin America, Australia, you will be able to see, even with your eye, uh, these two um, uh, dwarf galaxies uh, that, uh, that, um, that are there uh, uh, following our Milky Way. 
So basically, now, why morphology is so important? So let me just check the time. Okay, so uh, I will have to a bit, uh, I will have to pass some of the slides. So, but basically, just briefly, um, uh, why morphology is so important from all that, uh, that I mentioned up to now regarding these four principal uh, types, we also classify galaxies into two broad types. So we call them early types, those that are elliptical and lenticular, and then late types. And what these early late means? It's related with their age. So when we say early type galaxy, these are the oldest galaxies that we have in the universe. And the late type galaxies are actually irregular in spiral, are actually younger galaxies. So what you can then conclude from this, we can conclude that actually, if we are going in this direction, from irregular spiral toward the lenticular and elliptical galaxies, we are actually going from younger galaxies to the older galaxies. So this is already telling us that the morphology is very, very important because it's related with the age. So if we understand the morphology, the structure of the galaxies and how this structure was uh, changing across the cosmic time, we can actually study directly the evolution of the universe through the morphology and galaxy structure. Is this clear? Is it clear? Uh, please say yes, no. Yes, please, yes, you have a question. Yes. Exactly, yes. So this is still an open question. So how exactly the galaxies evolve? How from irregular, uh, uh, they become a spiral. And if from irregular, they directly become spiral. How from spiral galaxies, the galaxies become elliptical. Uh, how the lenticular galaxies are formed. All of these is still one of, are still open questions. But what we do know by now is that uh, um, uh, the elliptical galaxies actually do, uh, um, uh, do form through the merging of the spiral galaxies. So if you have two spiral galaxies that are similar in mass and these two spiral galaxies merge, the final result at the end will be the elliptical galaxy. For the lenticular galaxy, this can happen as well, but also there are other, uh, uh, other uh, theories that have been uh, proposed um, uh, related not only with interactions, mergers, but also with other, um, other dynamics that we observe in the universe, like the uh, infall of the gas uh, and different dynamics that are uh, there related to the feedback and so on, the instability of the galaxy and so on. But in principle, uh, this is the picture that we are having, but the details about the galaxy formation from one type to another is still really an open question, and that's what we actually want to, to understand. So beside these four types, I will just briefly mention, we also have the galaxies that we call peculiar galaxies, and these galaxies are those that have any kind of those structures that I mentioned that are not very common like rings, uh, tails, uh, jets, uh, and so on. And here you can see some of these galaxies. And we believe that uh, most of these peculiar galaxies are actually related with interactions and mergers, but with different stages of interaction and merger. And here you can see the um, uh, interactions, mergers of galaxies in their different stages. When the two galaxies are far away, but they already start interacting the material, uh, uh, exchanging the material. Like you can see these uh, small filaments here, a bit bigger the filaments when they are already closer and then the spiral structure get uh, uh, disrupted, you know, it gets uh, disturbed. Uh, then when they are even closer, you will get even a more uh, complex uh, structure because of the exchange of all the material up to the final stage of the emergence. You know? So this is something that we can expect also from uh, for the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy in four or five billion years from now. No, that these two galaxies now they are approaching each other. They are still too far away, so that they start uh, uh, exchanging the material. But as they are approaching, they will be going slowly through all of these different phases until they fully merge. 
And what we expect after these full emerging, we cannot observe that from our observations, but we can observe what is happening after the merger from the numerical simulations that are very important for studying the evolution. So these are just two examples when you have two galaxies merging, but two galaxies that are different in their mass. No? So you have here the, the ratio one to two and then the ratio one to six. So there are, I will not go into the details of this, but just that you can see uh, in numerical simulations what we are getting as a final effect and that, that as a final effect, we are getting uh, uh, from the merging of two spiral galaxies, uh, the generation of one massive elliptical galaxy. Okay, so um, uh, when we now look how the morphology is changing with the cosmic time, uh, the data that we are getting up to now, we can see that actually here you can see from the Big Bang, so you can imagine that the universe started here, and this is when the universe was 1 billion years old up to almost nowadays. No, this is the 12 billion years old, and now uh, the, uh, the age of the universe is almost 14 billion years old. Um, so uh, you can see how the galaxy structure is uh, at different cosmic times. And we can definitely see that there are differences in galaxy structure as we are going uh, uh, from the nearby universe. So from the current age of the universe uh, into the past. And what we want to understand in astronomy and extragalactic astronomy in particular is how the properties are changing and then uh, how the, the galaxy shape and color, color are changing across, uh, through the cosmic time and why all of this is happening. So what are the principal reasons for different uh, morphologies that we can observe across the cosmic time? And this is something that we are working on in different surveys. Uh, many people are working on, on, uh, on this, on understanding this, but we will see a bit later that actually there is a lot of difficulties in order to understand because as we are going further away from us, we are obtaining, we are losing the light. We are losing the light from those components in the galaxy that are fainted. So we will, uh, we are all the time biased actually in our observations when we have to study the, the uh, structure. However, I will just mention once again that uh, the morphology is why we are interested in morphology because once we know what is the morphology, of a large number of galaxies. And now we study different other properties of galaxies. We can, uh, it's a key, key parameter for understanding the galaxy formation and evolution and the formation and evolution of the whole universe. And why is that? It's that because the galaxies relate, the galaxy uh, morphology is related with um, most of other properties of galaxies. So you already could see a bit during my talk uh, that uh, uh, this is the case. We said that the morphology is related with the color. Ellipticals are more reddish uh, in general, not always, and then spirals are more bluish. It is related with the mass. Ellipticals are the most massive galaxies that we have in the universe in comparison with every others. It doesn't mean that you cannot have a spiral galaxy that is more massive than one uh, uh, elliptical. But when we look to the giant galaxies, the most massive galaxies that we have in the universe, they are elliptical. Then it's also related with the supermassive black holes where the masses of the supermassive black holes are much larger in elliptical than in spiral or irregular or uh, lenticular. And then with other properties as well. And I will just try briefly to explain this diagram. Um, yeah, it might be looking, uh, it might look uh, complex, but actually it's not so complex at all. Uh, and why I want to explain this diagram is because it's one of the basic diagrams that we use in extragalactic astronomy to study the evolution, to understand the evolution of the galaxies. So here you have the color and this is the mass. So you take in this uh, picture here, we have hundreds of thousands of galaxies. Hundreds of thousands of galaxies that uh, have their color measured and their stellar mass, how massive they are. So you have color if they are more bluish, if they're more reddish. So those galaxies, sorry, uh, those galaxies that are in this part, they are more bluish and those ga ga galaxies that are in this part, they have more red colors. And then this is the stellar mass. This is actually the logarithm. So this is 10 to the nine solar masses or 10 to the 11 solar masses. 
So you have here the galaxies that are with lower mass, and then here you have more massive galaxies. And then this is now when we take all these uh, hundreds of thousands of galaxies we put together, and what do we observe? We observe that the galaxies in large surveys are not distributed randomly across the whole diagram, across the whole values of uh, stellar mass and uh, uh, power. They actually have a limited range of the uh, color and the stellar mass. So we find that the galaxies are distributed in two principal regions. There is much larger distribution of galaxies here and here than in any other part of the diagram. And these two regions we call the blue cloud because they are more blue, ga blue galaxies and then red sequence because they are more reddish in color. So if now we look at this through the morphology, what, is the, what are the morphological properties of these galaxies? We will see that actually the early type galaxies, so elliptical lenticular, are mainly located here. So they have larger stellar mass and reddish colors. And then the spiral galaxies, although they are across the larger part of the diagram, but the majority, you can see these density, uh, density, uh, it's a density plot, so you can see these isopods. So where you have these red colors, you have the larger density of the galaxies. So the, the spiral galaxies are much more uh, located in this part of the, of the diagram. So basically, why this diagram is important? We can see that spiral elliptical galaxies or late type, early type galaxies are occupying different parts of this diagram in this space of their mass and color. And what we want to understand is the galaxy evolution. How the galaxies, because the galaxy, you remember what I said at the beginning, the galaxies are not static bodies. So it doesn't mean that when the galaxy is born, the galaxy will spend all its life here or here. No, the galaxy will move across the cosmic time through this diagram, depending on its evolution. So the Milky Way galaxy is currently around here, but when the Milky Way galaxy merge with Andromeda galaxy, at the final age, it will move from here to here. Is that clear? Yes? So what do we want to say with this? We want to say that knowing morphology and all what I mentioned previously is fundamental for understanding the galaxy evolution. So we believe that the galaxies are evolving in this diagram in this direction from late type galaxies from spiral to the early type galaxies, like the case of the Milky Way that I mentioned. But we want to understand now, this is, this is simplified. We now want to understand how this process goes depending on many other uh, parameters as well. Was this clear? Yes? Okay, good. This one I will uh, skip because we don't have much time and I will just come to the, uh, the concept of the galaxy formation and evolution. You no, know? so basically we have uh, how the galaxies, how the universe and the structures that we are observing in the universe, how these structures form since the universe started is still an open question. So there are two principal ideas. One idea is this one, where you have uh, uh, the um, uh, possibility that the larger structures were formed first, and then these larger structures were dividing into the smaller ones, like stars and smaller galaxies. And another possibility is that the opposite one, that in the universe, first the smallest structures, the stars and the smaller structures, clumps of matter, uh, got formed, and then through the interactions, mergers, their common dynamics, kinematics, they were building bigger and bigger systems. So nowadays, these are the two possibilities that we have, but this possibility is fitting much more with the observations and the numerical simulations that, uh, that we have currently. So basically, nowadays, in astronomy and cosmology, we are more orientated toward the idea that the smaller structures form first and then um, uh, uh, building uh, later on the, the bigger structures. And I will leave this for the questions, know how this uh, process goes. But basically, we believe, okay, I will just explain briefly this uh, slide. You know that you can have the, the uh, this is one of the possibilities through the merger that uh, in, in what I said, this evolutionary process, no? That you can have the, uh, the, isolated galaxy, let's say spiral galaxy like our Milky Way, okay? 
if in uh, if this galaxy lives in a near uh, in a rich environment like our Milky Way, uh, Andromeda galaxy is nearby. We said these two galaxies are approaching each other. At some point in four or five billion years, these two galaxies will merge. After the merging of these two galaxies, the, the, the object, the source will go through different phases. You get suddenly a lot of gas and dust through the merger uh, into the, the system. So you will get suddenly uh, a lot of new stars that are born. And we will get these uh, starburst phase of the galaxy. Also, that will feed the supermassive black hole that is in the center. So we expect the nuclear activity to, to um, uh, activate as well, so that we observe at some point the, uh, the uh, active galaxy uh, after the merger. And then after the, through the star formation feedback, AGN feedback with all the radiation that is now moving out, all the, the gas, uh, dust, uh, shutting down the star formation, making the stars to be, co uh, uh, to be cooler and older. Uh, at some point, uh, after billions and billions of years, we expect to have again uh, the, the isolated galaxy that is now much more massive in, uh, in, in size, in mass as well, and as a final result, the elliptical galaxy. But it doesn't mean that after every single merger, you will get the elliptical galaxy. You know? So you have, it depends on the mass of the spiral galaxies, type of the merger, and so on. So it's, it's more complex than, than this. And I will just, I don't know uh, if I have, uh, do I still have like, uh, uh, okay, we are approaching the end. So I will not have time to go to the details, but I will just briefly want to mention uh, about classification because you can ask yourself, okay, we heard all about uh, galaxies, but now how do we classify galaxies? And when we come to that point, it's actually not easy at all because all the images I showed up to now, you can see the structure. So you can say, because these are the nearby galaxies. So you can say, okay, this is the nearby galaxy. This can spiral arm. This is elliptical. This is irregular and so on. But what about the image like this that, that are the common images that we are getting? And now you have far away galaxies, very, very far away galaxies. The majority of these galaxies are point sources. And they are so far away that you cannot say what is their structure just using your eye, correct? So that is where uh, we have to now work on the development of different methods for classifying these galaxies and determining their structure. And that's not an easy uh, task at all. So we have different types of classification methods going through the visual that you can use only for the nearby sources and if you have a small sample. But if we are going actually to the, uh, to the large number of galaxies, we cannot also go one by one because we are talking about hundreds of thousands or even more than millions of galaxies that we have per survey. So then we are using automated methods. And these methods, this is what I has been using over the past more than 50 years that is uh, now focused on measuring on one side different parameters that are related with the distribution of light in the galaxy, but also the uh, shape of the galaxy. So how asymmetric, symmetric the galaxies are. And then combining these parameters with the deep learning or machine learning. So we applied in different, uh, so basically I will not have time to go into the details, but feel free to get in touch with me at any time if you want to hear more about this, because it's very, very interesting. And you learn actually a lot, you know, you have to do a lot of programming, you have to do a lot of, uh, 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 by classifying at the end uh, your sample. And that when we have uh, such a large number of galaxies, uh, combining uh, uh, these different parameters that we measure with the machine uh, uh, learning, we actually deal also with the statistics in astronomy because you are getting now not uh, determined uh, uh, type, if it's early, late type, but, but the probability of the galaxy to belong to one type or another. So we use the, this uh, method uh, in Alhambra survey, uh, that is uh, one of the, uh, the surveys, the big surveys for studying the cosmic evolution. And this is the work that we published in 2013, where we classified more than 22,000 galaxies. And then uh, this big catalog that we produced was used later on for studying uh, uh, different properties of galaxies, mixing with the, the morphology and trying to understand their, uh, uh, their, uh, their evolution. 
And here I will just note that this is one work that we published a few years ago. And in this work, uh, uh, we were dealing with uh, simulations. So basically what we did uh, was we took in different surveys, the galaxies that are nearby, that we can see what is their structure. And now we simulated them by moving them to fainter magnitudes and to be much further away from us. And uh, you can just see how much the galaxy shape will be uh, changing uh, as you're moving the galaxy far away from us. So if you have a spiral galaxy that is nearby to us, okay, very nearby to the Milky Way. So you can see visually all the structure from your data. But if you now imagine that this same galaxy, spiral galaxy, is not just a few megaparsecs uh, from, uh, uh, from us, but that this galaxy, sorry, few um, uh, millions of light years, let's say from us, but that this same galaxy is, let's say, few billions giga years from us, you will at some point not see anymore this spiral galaxy as spiral. You will be able to see it as elliptical. Why? Not because it became elliptical, but because you lost the information of these spiral arms because they are fainter, and you only see the central part, which means that you can misclassify, classify wrongly your galaxy when the galaxies are far away. So this is a bit, even if you don't understand all the concepts, it doesn't matter. It's just a bit to, to give you a feeling of uh, the work that we have to deal with and actually how challenging it is when now you have a large number of galaxies and that are at different cosmic types. And uh, with, uh, with our students, uh, uh, we also did a lot of, I would just like to mention a few works and I will finish, um, that uh, a few works that where we uh, were dealing with the morphology, they are not the only ones. Uh, this is uh, with, um, uh, with Irene, she's now, uh, uh, working as a scientist, but it was the work we did during her PhD in Spain, where we uh, were dealing with, the, this is one of the galaxy clusters. So all of these galaxies that you can see here now, these are classified galaxies um, with different uh, types, but these galaxies are all connected. They are in the cluster. And with uh, this work, uh, we got some of the very interesting results because we observed that when the galaxies are in the cluster that is in the formation, not necessarily the galaxies are following the same trends as when they are uh, isolated. Uh, with Seleket, Sele during his uh, PhD, he now works at Kotebe University. He finished the PhD last year. And this was the first paper that we published uh, uh, where also in one of the galaxy clusters, we uh, used the machine learning uh, because it was far away. You can see here how far away this galaxy cluster is. So it's about uh, 9.3 giga years after the Big Bang. So if now we are at 14 billion years, so this is uh, uh, some um, uh, uh, a bit less than 4 billion years far away from us. So basically for these 4 billion years, the light was traveling to reach us so that we can detect all of these galaxies. And then with uh, Tseleke in this galaxy cluster, we obtained the most detailed um, uh, catalog, morphological catalog using the machine learning and then this data and this catalog was uh, used later on for different other um, uh, studies that, uh, that have been uh, done during the, the thesis of selecting. With Tilakun also, we are studying the morphologies, but what we want to understand is when we have uh, the galaxies that are active galaxies, so when we have these active galactic nuclei in the center, so the supermassive black holes that we get a lot of radiation from there, how these active galaxies, uh, how these uh, uh, supermassive black holes and the radiation that is coming is affecting our morphological classification. So we published uh, one paper. We found that actually once the AGN contribution is larger than 25%, then that will affect our classification. And uh, we published uh, one paper. Now the, the second paper is uh, in, the, in the submission and we expect Ilakun to, to uh, 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 finish uh, soon. With Betty, we also focused on morphological classification of specific type of active galaxies, but not only in optical. You remember that we said that when we go from one uh, part of the spectrum to another, the morphology changed. So we did uh, in optical, but also in radio, also in x-rays and got really interesting results. And Betty, uh, that was the, the work during the MSC of uh, MSC thesis of Betty, and she's now doing her PhD in, uh, in Spain. 
so this is all if you got interested about galaxy structure and morphology and you want to practice uh, your classification as well, you can uh, participate in the, in the Galaxy Zoo. So this is the citizen science project. You can go to the website, to this website, and you can start classifying the galaxies. Um, and uh, uh, these are uh, the data that later on, for example, you remember the, the diagram that I showed you that uh, with uh, the uh, galaxy, we study galaxy evolution. So this diagram, this diagram was done with the galaxy data. So all this morphology, early type, late type morphology, was the galaxies were classified because here we have hundreds of thousands of galaxies. These galaxies were classified not necessarily by astronomers, but by citizens in general. So people can uh, uh, participate in galaxy classification, and that is uh, the contribution of the citizens for the science, so that then the astronomers can do different studies and understand how the galaxy evolution is uh, uh, going on. So this is uh, this is all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, For the Milky Way, yeah, yes, and also. So, but then, so you are actually using my gender, but you know, a little bit of the like that. So, when, but they are not actually near to us because you see the Android mirror is actually the nearest galaxy. So, they are, so are we actually in a binary system, binary galaxy system? Uh, you mean for the, uh, you are uh, asking for the, uh, dwarf galaxy for the satellite galaxy, large and small Magellanic clouds, or Andromeda. I didn't uh, uh, hear. Well, okay, let me make it clear. So there are actually two galaxies that are two irregular galaxies rotating, but they are actually exactly that they are attracted by the Milky Way and they all make a system. So that means they, but it doesn't mean that like that. So, but they do to generally really, and after they are other things. So then actually, the Milky Way having the same near mass to us. So are, are we actually in the binary system? Yes, we, we don't really use uh, the system. Uh, we don't really use, uh, uh, when you say the binary system, it's more the terminology that we use for the uh, in stellar astronomy, for the stars. So when you have the two stars that are rotating together yeah. uh, um, um, around the same center of mass. No? So for the galaxies, uh, we don't use uh, really the terminology binary system. It's just that these two galaxies, so you have, you have the, the two dwarf galaxies, the small large Magellanic clouds, that are satellite galaxies of the Milky Way only. So they are attracted by the Milky Way gravity, you know? and they are actually approaching every time more and more Milky Way. Yeah. And actually their morphology every time is getting more and more disturbed because of this interaction. So we can also, uh, we expect that at some point, these two galaxies will also fully uh, interact, merge with the, with the Milky Way. But their mass, their dwarf galaxies, their mass is uh, uh, small, too small enough so that Milky Way can still keep its, uh, its work you know? But then the principal major is with the Andromeda galaxy. So it's not really that it's a binary system as we said in the stellar astronomy as well. Once again, we have a uh, stars moving around the same center of time, no? So this is not what, what we really have in, in the concept of the galaxy. But these two galaxies, each of them has its own kinematics, its own dynamics. They are all rotating, uh, they are all moving, they have their kinematic. Andromeda galaxy also has its own satellite galaxy. But at some point, as I said, after four or five billion years, these two galaxies will match. Is that is that clear? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, it was a nice presentation, by the way. And the question I, I have was, uh, so we've been saying that our Earth have its own moon, which is a satellite, right? So our galaxy also have its satellite. So is there any time key possibility that our these galaxies will interact? I mean, as we've been saying, the Andromeda and our galaxy, is there any chance these satellites and the galaxy itself will merge together by any chance? I didn't understand. Because I think because of the mask, I didn't uh, understand. Let me repeat it. So we've been saying that our Earth also have its moon, right? So we've been discussing about the satellite, galaxy satellite. But galaxies have the, their own satellites, right? Yes. So is there any teeny tiny possibility these galaxies will merge at any chance? If there is any chance that they will merge. Yeah, is there any chance? Yes, yes, yes. That is what I was saying. So even now, the Milky Way, which, are you talking if there is any chance that Moon and Earth will merge? I was saying these sat satellite galaxies. Ah, yes. Yeah, 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 I mentioned previously. So these the two satellite galaxies that you can see, as I said, from the southern hemisphere, you know, if you go to, to any part of the uh, uh, southern part of Africa, you can see by your eye, you know. So these two small uh, satellite galaxies will at some point uh, totally fully interact with the Milky Way. So they will merge uh, uh, at some point a few billion years uh, uh, away from now. Yes. Thanks. But we can also see, like uh, now, uh, if, if I go back, uh, if I go back uh, here to the Milky Way, now currently they are classified as, uh, I think it was here, yes. So you can see that uh, currently they are classified as irregular galaxies, no? But actually, and you can see that they are classified as irregular because they don't have any regular shape. But actually there are signs that these two galaxies have, uh, did have the spiral, they were uh, dwarf spiral galaxies, especially in the case of the Large Magellanic Cloud, that it was a dwarf spiral galaxy with all the spiral structure in the past, before it approached Milky Way so close that due to the interaction with the Milky Way, the, the, uh, the structure of the Large Magellanic Cloud got totally uh, disturbed. So basically, as now these two galaxies are approaching more and more Milky Way, uh, their structure will be more and more, more disturbed. The gas, gas, the stellar component that they have also will be uh, more and more uh, uh, disturbed. And at some point, uh, uh, these two galaxies will totally merge with the Milky Way. It's just that the mass of the Milky Way is uh, um, uh, much, much larger so that uh, they will not uh, significantly, we don't expect to have the, the concept that I mentioned, having elliptical galaxy at the end, when Milky Way interacts with these two galaxies, it's not enough that you can have the elliptical galaxy at the end. For that one, you need a merger with a similar mass source like uh, Milky Way Andromeda. Thank you. 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 So just uh, feel free to also uh, get in touch at any time. So I'm here in Ethiopia, in Addis. So whatever uh, questions, doubts that you have, you can also do the uh, society, get in touch. Um, and uh, and then I will be here until the end. Uh, I'm asking you the term here, unfortunately. So, All right. 
So our uh, next presenter will be Dr. Pizu. Uh, Dr. Pizu, no? Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Okay. Um uh fitsum balalo uh yeah electrical and computer engineering uh with uh uh memory uh computer engineering now yet now the science line and the power of literally uh to demo uh disclaimer I'm not an expert in astronomy or space science line but I'm interested like you guys um so Zari Maharachu, what is the role of computers in um, like, you know, anything, but like specifically for this uh, particular uh, discussion uh, is in space science or like astronomy and then like in the places that they are needed uh, in uh, uh, astronomy. Like there was, uh, I, I, I came, at in the end, but I enjoyed your uh, talk. Um, so I'm going to make some mistakes because I have some things in there as well. So if you have any questions regarding that, we have an expert here. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so how do we, how do computers help us see the cosmos, okay? And what are computers? Before I start, let me ask you, what are computers? How did computers get the name computers in the first place? Yes. Huh. Damn it. I said, Mom, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I want to show you something here. Do you know who these ladies are? Like, it's not visible that much because it's be became a background. But, like, um, these are some of the, the, the computers uh, at NASA before they were, they were ever like mechanical or uh, no, not mechanical. They were mechanical computers, but you know, electronics computers. So the name itself came from people that do computation, right? So, have you ever wondered that why why is it not called calculator or something, right? It's called computer because uh, it it does the things that these people used to do before, right? Basically, AI is going to like uh, take everybody out of the question uh, out of the workforce at some point in the future. Right, so this that's what computers used to be, right? Um, and what do we use computers for? What do you use them for? So they are used for um, uh, to store data, uh, like communicate data across multiple, I don't know, large distances through their interconnects, and mainly they are used to process the, the, that data into information. Data is basically nothing but, you know, the, 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 like the raw form of information. Until it gets processed, we, we don't have any, like, I mean, we may not be able to understand the data itself, okay? Now, um, I think some of you were laughing at this um, picture, right? This one, right? How many of you, have ever used this kind of computer? One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, so um, when I came to uh, AIT in um, in Japan calendar 1991, that would be like 20, how many years? 23 years ago. Um, there were these computers on the corridor and only had, um, you know, text interface. The, like graphics was not that. Um, even if I had experience using this before, but like that, those were the real ones that I used actually to uh, to program, like you know, TV stuff on them. Um, these are common now, right? And can can anyone tell me what these are?
Yo no, antes que vos digas. ¿Mm? Ah, looks like a server room, right? And actually, these, these are like, um, okay. If you search for like uh, on Google for super computers, this is what you will see. Because super computers are not just in one computer, but like a bunch of computers put together, connected uh, with very high um, high speed networks, right? Uh, to come together and do some, um, you know, <clears throat> common tasks. In fact, I will explain, like, like I will show you the architectures of like computers, like in general, right? Um, what they look like. Um, and this is taken from my thoughts in parallel computing. Um, so when people started like, you know, uh, at, at, in the beginning or when like, uh, when, when to solve like problems, they couldn't like fit them inside one single computer, right? Uh, and there were not like that many computers that were available for like many people. They were expensive. And they were like put in, uh, you know, like huge data centers. Even the term data center was not there, but like, you know, in some, uh, huge, uh, storage rooms where people connect to them, uh, remotely and work on them. Right. And they said, okay, why don't we connect them together? Right. To a memory. And this, these are called shared memory. Okay. And you have like processors connected to memory and. Uh, the software that is written for this kind of um, computers, like, is not complex. And then, like, when computers became like widely available, people started like um, Okay. So our uh, people said, okay, now many individuals have their own computer that memory, but then now they are connected. So what should we do? Right? Uh, let's come up with like uh hardware and software that what we them uh, and like let's get a bunch of them together to uh you know do the things that we want um faster and better. So uh here we call this one distributed shared memory systems, right? Uh it's because like these are individual computers but connected to the network and they do the same tasks that we want them to do. Um and next uh people thought okay like especially like in in server, in server rooms and you know uh, people started when we building super computers they said okay instead of like putting one computer why don't we uh like create a hybrid system where uh we have a bunch of uh, like processors connected to the same memory and those connected uh through um the network okay now here this saves energy and a lot of space right but also provides to uh a huge amount of computation in the small space Okay. Um, so next came the era of what? These are like single processes, right? And uh, I think how many of you have like um computer? How many of you? Okay. How many of you have smartphones? Ah, uh, you have computers. Like you don't think. Your smartphone is a computer, but it is, in fact, um, like these days, a parallel computer, not only just a uh, computer, it has multiple cores on it, right? Like, so with that advancement, what happens is, um, you know, like all those uh, single cores, 
became multiple cause. Now, these ones can have like many, many cause in them, right? Up to uh, 18, 16, 17. So like, which means the compute density per, per node is become a huge, right? And I'll tell you why this is needed actually when we come to, um, you know, uh, doing astronomy and replicate. But then that was not enough. Okay, now we have processors that have multiple cores in them um, that, that can allow you to do multiple uh, computation. Like, I mean, like a lot of computation, but that was not enough because our need for uh, processing is increasing because the data that we generate uh, from all uh, fields of science is huge. Okay, in fact, um, I'll give an example later on of astronomy. Like there is this um, one project I don't know if it's completed yet. Called the square, the square kilometer um, array. Uh, it's supposed to be either in South Africa or in um, Australia. It generates about seven hundred terabytes of data per second. Like we need to have like processing capabilities that can do, um, like that can use, like process just that much uh, data uh, really fast. For that, we these, these things were added, like in the like in the future, um, like architecture area, like mm -hmm. arena, like, and these are called accelerators. They are called accelerators because usually they are designed, um, like they they designed, uh, thinking of like an like a domain or like an area of science that requires a certain kind of computer. The, the processes that you see here and usually here are called general purpose computers. And they, they are designed to do any kind of computation, right? But when you come to like, like I don't know, astronomy, one of the things that you would do would be, a, I don't know, uh, say in major black hole. <laughs> and there are there is a specific uh, computation that is needed for that, okay? You could use, general purpose uh, computation for that, but you can also use like a specific architecture for that particular um, domain, okay? But here we call these ones MIC, multiple integrated, integrated um, uh, not chip, um, computers, like in the single chip. Uh, and, and we have others called GPUs, graphic processing units, so graphic processing units used to be uh, for gaming, but they are now used for many kinds of stuff. Like usually in, in, uh, for scientific computing um, and uh, for like artificial intelligence. Um, okay, now that's about computer architecture uh, in parallel computing. If you have any questions, you ask me now because I'm going to change this now. You have any questions regarding this? Okay. So, how do we use computers in astronomy? And there are three things that we use computers uh, for in astronomy. The first one is uh, to control uh, the control, like of the the the, the, the instruments that are used. In uh, astronomy, like telescopes, yeah, telescopes in, on Earth, and telescopes in space, and uh, the acquisition of data from um, new telescopes, right? It's called you know the observational astronomy, right? Um, because astronomy has other um, another uh, leg it's called theoretical astronomy. So in, in observational uh, astronomy, I think that's what you uh, do, right? As observational astronomy. <laughs> so um so we use that we use computers in in uh the, the acquisition and like also processing of that data right uh and all all of the stuff these days are controlled by computers okay and next is um like the, the concept in theoretical astronomy, what people do is like they have some understanding of 
from theories and they want to uh, prove that these theories are true and they uh, create a mathematical model for them. And these mathematical models can be simulated um, using computer. But the amount of uh, like, you know, objects involved in astronomy is astronomical. <laughs> um, like, how many stars in a galaxy? So if you take our galaxy, it's about uh, 100 billion stars, right? And um, the next question that I'm going to ask you is how many atoms inside these galaxies or um, like, I don't know, I can even ask you how many atoms in you, right? So the, the amount of data that is required to be simulated is huge. The amount of computational uh, requirements proportionally increased with uh, the, the, the simulation that we want to do. Another one is like, uh, we want to make uh, like the astronomy information readily available to the public or even to the science themselves, right? Once you have, uh, like once you simulate it, you need to visualize it, right? For, for you to understand, to, to, to come up with an understanding of the, um, you know, whatever you said, right? So, um, we use computers in these three uh, areas. There could be others, but like uh, in these uh, three areas more. So, uh, I'm going to give you like examples in each of the, these three um, areas. So here uh, is like a set of telescopes across the world that are used uh, to image uh, the first, uh, I, I mean, the, yeah, to image the first, uh, no, to acquire the first uh, image of a black hole ever, okay? <clears throat> so um, the, the, the method technique that is used uh, for this is called a very long baseline spectrometry uh, imaging. And uh, it uses uh, like a bunch of um, like radio, radio um, telescopes are uh, located all over the world. And um, the data they, gener they generated was so huge, they could not transmit it across the, 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 the internet. It was so huge. So the data was transferred uh, by taking the hard disk and like by helicopter. <laughs> Some of them are very far away. So like they, uh, and then they collected that and they, uh, they computed. And I'm, I'm going to show you when they computed what they computed at. So this is a galaxy and this is an, an elliptical galaxy that was imaged. Um, I mean, the, the black hole that was in that was imaged this is called the Meteor Edison um, um, galaxy. And in this galaxy, um, very huge, it has about a, a trillion um, stars in it. And uh, it's in the Virgo constellation, and and, and you see this? Can you see this light? There is a white light over here, right? And that white light is a stream of uh, a jet, a jet stream of material that is ejected from the center of the galaxy by the black hole. So they collect all this data, like right, from to here, and um. Before they call it, this, this is the, the shadow of the black hole that they saw. But what I want to show, what I wanted to show you is this. Before they collected the data, they simulated what uh, the, um, like the outcome is going to look like. Okay, so what you see here is the simulation of the black hole, the simulation of what they will do in that, um, like a galaxy, right? My mission is in the their mission is in the last of the major simulator, right? And then after the, 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 the data was collected and uh, like and process, and do you see what do you see there?
ምን ይታያቸዋል? ሲሙሌት የተደረገውና እ ይላያል ወጣ? is it different that is that is that different no it was not that different right so um so this is the actual uh computation uh, the v the lib method no the ldi method to take now uh like compute you know compute the lego so you see like the shadow of the black hole we cannot see the black hole because the black hole is uh like um no light cannot escape uh the, 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 the after it passes the event horizon of the black hole so which means we cannot see it that's why they call it black hole because we cannot see it but you can see the shadow of the black hole because this is material that is um in the accretion the accretion disk that is like um rotating around the black hole and it's going really fast now why do you like you can you you, you may ask There is a black hole at the center of the Milky Way, which is right here, about 26,000 light years away from here. And we're um, imagining like a black hole that is about 53 million light years away from us. And why do you think is that? <clears throat> okay, the reason is this. <clears throat> this is so far away, right? And it's an adult. But, uh, Uh, but our like the black hole in our Milky Way, I don't know if it is, okay, it's, it's like an infant. If you, if you, have you tried to take pictures of like kids? What's the problem with like taking pictures of kids? Yeah, they move around, right? <laughs> they move around a lot. So what happens is like, it's, it becomes very difficult for you. But if it is another, it's like, It's there. they don't move right so um the reason i'm telling you that is like uh they, they actually imaged um they, they actually imaged the, um <clears throat> i want to show you that anyways they imaged the um the black hole at the center of the the, the galaxy called uh page esta um and this was the simulation they had before and like um and this was like going really fast like if you take a like a an image of it if you take a video of like of it the ma the matter around it like moves really fast and very difficult to like um measure so what you do is um you take like images across multiple hours and then uh, usually will have like similar behavior and then you like the quality You take average of it, and this is what the average looks like. And this is this is actually what was moving, what was in there. Okay, and this is I think uh, and anyway, there was a video that I want to show you that I got, it. but anyway, okay. Now, this was to take, to take the picture of uh, like the black hole, right? Now, we're talking about simulation because it's theoretical physics. Now, this is actually not uh, for the, um, yeah, theory practice, okay? Now, the, the example I'm going to show you is another simulation. Um, I think I have to do it here. Now, this simulation, is the simulation of uh, the universe starting at the beginning. Like, uh, you see matter of, uh, like, everywhere. Like, here it's showing you, like, 200,000 light years across, okay? And as you can see, like, matter is going in here. Why? Because this is heavier than this, and, like, Like everywhere, what it is showing you is like a galaxy is being formed. Okay, like across uh, this will go like like become three hundred thousand light years. Like that's fine. I think like you you earlier asked about the satellite galaxies, right? And these satellite galaxies, like at some point, will merge with the Milky Way galaxy. Look like this because you see here there is something else. 
like this is going to show you what happens. You see, like matter is like coalescing into a galaxy. Okay. And like uh, here it uh, shows you how many like million stars are like being formed from the gas around. It. Okay. Now this is like a, a simulation of like how galaxies are created. It's just pure theory. You want to see like there is uh, like there is a theory from like uh, Einstein, the like general uh, theory of relativity, and there are I'm sure like a bunch of theories, and you put them together and try to see if uh, like those uh, theories actually lead to what you see in the universe. Okay. So to do this kind of calculation requires a huge amount of power from like no not power. Yes, actually, it will be quite electrical power as well, but it, it, it requires um, the computational power that, that um, uh, can do this uh, synthesis for you. Okay? Okay. So, what we saw earlier is control and acquisition, and then we saw uh, like for practical purposes and also uh, for uh, simulation purposes uh, that we require um, we require com computers. Okay. Now, once you have the data, once you have the data, and like, and for your own understanding and for the understanding of the general public. What's the next thing you need to do? So the next thing is you present like uh, that data to um, the public or for your like in scientific uh, um, interpretation of the data. That, that's what I would say. You, you need to interpret the data. For it to be uh, um, interpreted, it has to be presented in an interpretable way, okay? So observations are usually done in um you know um like that in our physical uh range usually they are like uh done in many different ways like the gamma ray uh telescopes are there x ray telescopes are right there uv light uv telescopes are there and in, in the same telescope you may have uh infrared uh um receivers uh optical receivers actually radio receivers usually are like this uh, on Earth, I don't know if there is any radio receiver outside of uh, us. Anyways, so this transmission, like we cannot see X rays. Can we see X rays? Can we see gamma rays? Can we see infrared? No, we cannot really see these things. So they need to be trans translated to something that we can see. Okay? So uh, it, it, even like once we translate them into something that we can see, we can uh, extract so many uh, insights from that data. Um, so, what do you think this is? Okay, you've seen this picture before. You, you have seen this picture before. Okay, good. <clears throat> but what you don't know, is that this is not actually the picture of the tenders on the um, on, on the uh, atmosphere of Jupiter. This is an illustration of artist illustration of tenders on Jupiter from the data that was acquired through the Juno spacecraft. car. <laughs> it's not the actual. Um, it's not the picture directly taken from the, the like uh, on Jupiter, but it is an illustration of it from the other data that was uh, acquired. Okay, what is it? What is this? Okay, this is actual data that was acquired. Okay, this, this was I think I don't know the South Pole of Jupiter, like uh, when uh, when Juno the Juno aircraft. Passed away like through it, and it, like it had other instruments that uh, collect information as well, right? So, so the artists were able to generate the previous um, 
email, uh, the, the, the PDF image uh, uh, for it. Um, and this Jupiter, right? So we, we, we know this. And do uh, you know this? Who is that? Huh? Who? How many moons does Jupiter have? 79, right? And who is this one? Who? I know, I think that the, the yellow one, what, what, what was the name? <laughs> the yellow one, the one that is like, um, anyway, the yellow one that is uh, more uh, volcanic, like the, the one that is very new to Jupiter. Like that's very, um, you know the name? Europa, yes. <laughs> so, um, so this is the next picture. And this was taken by Hubble, the, the Hubble Space Telescope in the optical range, okay? Now, what do you see? Do you see the other, um, do you see the other uh, moons, right? They're not here. Now, this is another picture taken by the new, uh, the newly minted telescope, uh, the James Webb Telescope. And these, these, these pictures were taken um, in infrared, okay? And it's, it, it, it allows you to see the, the different version of um, um, this thing. But there is something cool here. I mean, it's not visible here, but you guys know that Jupiter has um, a ring. How many of you knew that? Because in all of the uh, pictures taken optically, you don't see the ring. You see the rings very visible with Saturn, right? So here are the rings uh, in Jupiter. Like, um, I don't know, is it visible? Hello? Yeah, it's, it's not visible, like, for, but if you look at the picture, you know, on a computer, you can see it, okay? <clears throat> now, the, like, the size of the sensors on the, uh, like, these, um, like, telescope is, like, huge, right? You have to take that and then, uh, like, uh, not only take it, think about this. When the James, uh, the James, uh, James Webb Space Telescope was launched uh, in December 2021, okay? And the first images were acquired, uh, were released in July uh, 12, 2022. Almost six and a half months apart. Why do you think of that? Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to calibrate your devices. You have to make sure that the data that you get is correct. The first time they, uh, like, the first time uh, an space telescope was, uh, like, sent into space, which is the Hubble, the image they got was what? It was blurry, right? So it was unusable for two years until they fixed it, right? Until it was fixed. They couldn't change the, the, they could not change the, the, the mirrors there, right? They could not change the mirrors. The only way you can do is the instrument that collects the, the data. You can calibrate it in such a way that it can, uh, interpret the, 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 the light that passing through the, um, the mirrors, right? It has to compensate for the mistake in the ear, uh, sorry, in the mirror, right? So you need what computers to do that, okay? And these images, you, you need like um, you have this telescope out there, but there are only like I don't know a handful, a handful of pictures that are actually collected from it. If you look at it, I mean, you you expect like if you have 
like a telescope that is looking into the um, like the cosmos, right? It even allows you to look to ask like a galaxy about 12 point something billion light years away. And there are only like, I don't know, 20 pictures from it in July. Why is that? It's because there is a huge data that you need to go through and do like uh, apply like um, these um, algorithms and these like scientific computations on it, finally to make sense to us. Okay. And um, it's not even the, 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 like the scientists that are doing this computation, it's the citizens, um, like everyone else, like you people, or like, uh, like anyone that is interested has the tools can do computations. Like there are like procedures you can follow to do that computation and like um, and present this kind of image to the world, right? To have a better understanding of the um, universe. So this is a picture of the phantom galaxy. Okay, um, I don't know how how far it is, but like this this was taken by uh, the Hubble uh, optical telescope. Okay, and uh, this image was take, taken by the James uh, James Webb uh, Space Telescope, and it was infrared in the infrared. Now. The, the, the good thing about infrared is that there is a lot of dust in space, right? Sometimes we cannot, we're not able to see like the, the like, um, for example, we're not able to see um, the center of the galaxy that we are in because there is a, a huge amount of dust between us and the center of it, right? Uh, and it's not easy for us to see it in the visible range optically, right? Using the uh, the infrared, infrared, you can like peer through that dust. I want you to pay attention here. See here. Look at this. And what do you see? There are some lights after it. Right? After it, like I don't. Know. You see these points over there. Now, I want to show you something. Now, this is optical, okay? And look at this here. There is no cavity, like right? you can see that, that's, that this feel like a, this is a cavity, like that is show you that there is some, like, I mean, you can see past it. Why? Because it's like, um, there is dust, there are a lot of dust in there, right? And we cannot like see past it, but here, like if you actually, the reproduction theory is not uh, as uh, you would expect it, but what you can see is that there is a hole here. I mean, now you can ask a lot of questions. And uh, sense like uh, doctor over there, professor over there, like ask these questions. Why is there this big gap here? No, I'm not asking you. She can ask you kind of questions, right? They could do further science to identify why there is this huge cavity there. What, what caused it, right? You can see like the, 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 the strings here, like why are like, why, why is there so much cluster of like matter around here, right? And what, and not like not here. You can ask this kind of questions and you can get this kind of, um, I mean, you can ask those and you can look at uh, the data from here and make, like, you can process further to understand um, questions like that. Uh, and you know, when you put them together, this is the, what they make that video. Okay, the Hubble and the Empire. Okay. It's a nice picture. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> So like putting them in perspective, Hubble, the infrared, and the composite. Okay, another thing that I want to show you uh, is this. Now, what do you see here? There is a star and there is 
a planet. Now, this, this is one of the exoplanets that was uh, discovered some time back called the HIP uh, 65466E. And uh, the, 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 the star is some, some, some 363 light years away from us. Um, and the, the planet is estimated to be 1 to 2, 1.5 times the size of uh, Jupiter. And uh, it's very far away uh, from its uh, host star, about 92 AU. 92 AU means, um, I think, three times far from, um, from the, the, um, the orbit, no, yeah, the orbit of um, Neptune, right? AU means the distance of, uh, from the sun to us, right? But like very far away from. And the reason that I actually like I'm presenting here to you, and by the way, this is an artist, an artist, this is not the uh, what the planet looks like. We don't know what the pla planet looks like, right? But we can guess from the data that we acquired uh, earlier. And this is an artist depicting of what the planet may look like. Okay. And what we picture is this. This is a direct observation of this planet using the James Webb uh, Space Telescope. Okay, uh, sorry. Here is a star. Okay, here is a star. And uh, you see, like, the star is there, and you see this, uh, like, bunch, right? And this is a planet. <laughs> Doesn't look anything like what we've seen in the are picture, right? Because the other picture is what? Not this picture. But from these pictures, we learn a lot. Um, we, 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 like, this James Webb space telescope is equipped with, like, um, like spectro, spectrograms. What, what they do is they, they analyze the light that they receive. And they um, associated with the kind of elements that emit this light. Okay, and uh, one of the new item was that carbon dioxide was uh, like the new news was that carbon dioxide was carbon dioxide was detected in one of the exo planets, not this one, but like in one of them. And the, the like the first in 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 some of the like the first image. That were released from the James Webb Space Telescope. One of the things was like they they were able to identify water vapor in one of the exoplanets as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, before I conclude, I want to give you some um, like highlights about like other methods that people use uh, before uh, and currently are using. Now, one of the things that uh, in the beginning of like, um, not at the beginning, like some time back, like 20 years ago, not many people have like supercomputers, right? Like supercomputers, like even like uh, reserving time on a supercomputer could be very expensive. Uh, I, I know like in some places when people do research, they pay like 80 something dollars per hour or something, like some places, right? Uh, for, for, for you using that particular uh, computational uh, resource. However, we have millions of computers out there, right? And um, and the people the people that we that have computers, like how how much percentage of computation do you use? How much, how, how much of it do you use per day, for example? I'm going to ask you. Like, how, how much of the time of the day do you use this computer? <laughs> so, like, computers, I think I could be mistaken here, but at least. 80% of the time, they're not utilized. Even when you're using them, right? 
unless you're running an experiment or like you're doing something that is like computer intensive for for most people the capacity the capability of the computer is not used but the amount of computational capability out there because of the, the the number of computers that we have is huge so what what they came up uh with is that uh there is this um like uh project called uh SETI. SETI is Set for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Um have 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 has anyone seen the 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 movie contact? You have seen it? So that was uh inspired by like a finding by some astronomers of like a radio signal from some somewhere in I don't know if it is in our galaxy, but like somewhere in space that looked like uh, it had some pattern. It was called the wow, the wow uh, signal. And the, like, the thing is, nature produces radio uh, signals, right? Now, if for us to identify an intelligence, the radio signals will have to have a pattern, okay? But imagine this: there are a bunch, a bunch of telescopes, radio telescopes around the world collecting this data. The data is still, we don't have the capability to compute them all. So what they came up with is, uh, let's let's use let, let's utilize these unused resources in the world, right? And let's let, let's divide the 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 data and send it to people. And the people compute uh, on the data and return back the result. So that what that means is that uh, about five million people got involved in this. And what happened is that um, like they were able to process. But twenty years of doing this, they did not find anything. <laughs> Do you think they would reveal if they find something? <laughs> but anyways. And I think last year, March, they um, stopped using it. However, the same technology was used in PALS. Um, during COVID, people had to come up with a vaccine or a treatment for COVID, right? So um, this, like so many people, so many people volunteered and allowed their computers to be computed that project had the most computational capability in the world at that time. It was, it was, it was like, like an example of data, data flow, like kind of computation capability. <laughs> now, this field is emerging in uh, astronomy because uh, like, like I said, there is a lot of a huge, huge data and like people cannot complex Cannot go through it, come through it, and find meaning in it. What you can do is like teach uh, an artificial intelligence model and use that model to, um, you know, find like meaning uh, from the data. And uh, in her um, uh, presentation earlier, uh, they were using deep learning to classify uh, morphologies of uh, galaxies, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, I was actually. The first time I heard about the application of artificial intelligence, the first time I heard about, not the first time it was used. First time I heard about um, the application of artificial intelligence was in, in detection of um, like exoplanets because um, the way they uh, detect exoplanets is by uh, looking for um, like minute uh, changes in the stars, um, in, in the stars. Um, Light, they call it the transit method, because when a, a planet moves around, like you know, like if you're looking at the star and then around it, and you look, so what will happen? What, what will happen to the brightness of the star? It, it lowers a little bit, right? And they call it transit method, right? And um, like writing simple algorithms to detect that, you could do, but like. Uh, they, they, they figured, like, we have actually detected this, like, uh, this number of, um, 
planets using this method. So we know for sure. So we have the data to train the model and they train models uh, to um, test um, like you know, extra planet. Okay, now, <clears throat> that's my presentation. I hope you like un understand that we could use um, like how, how there is a software part and the hardware, we look at the hardware part and mostly the software at all. Um, can anyone tell me before, like, you know, I, they put me off the stage. Can anyone tell me what is going on in this uh, picture on this video? Or do you see it? Do you even see something happening? What is it? Okay. You see this thing over here? Okay, this picture is from, now this video is from um, this project that looks for near as uh, uh, object, which is asteroids. Just, you know, <laughs> we don't want to die like the, um, Yeah, like the dinosaurs. So we have the technology now to look for them. And this is a known, um, this is a known asteroid, and they tested it with it, right? This shows um, they tracked in the path of it. So it's not going to attack it. <laughs> but anyways, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fizu, uh, for the nice presentation we had. I don't know if you have noticed that most of our presentations are kind of feeding one to another. In our first presentation, we started from astronomy and we see that we use uh, computers to classify galaxies and then we saw in depth how that works. And now we will uh, proceed to our next presentation as well. Before that, that's I don't know the Yes. If you have questions, and do let the Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. So, get our presentation in the Honoka Bazoom Salona Join American and the State Up in Madrigo, Dr. Wasuni Bala, at Alana Gerno Join Madergan, so virtually no Casugara Minor and presentation and get along with no. So, and the Zuma and Tunum State Up in Madrigma, as I proceed in Aragano Madam.
Okay. Sama? Nanti sama ini bro. Sama kan? Okay. Ya, ini yeah. sama. Okay. Yes, out put a chunk nanti lagi ada. Masih sama? Ini semuanya. Awan ini sama pasti. Awan sama cek harga lah. Ya, semuanya. Awan ini syarat lah. Benda benda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think mejor mejor tu sudah dah. Ke rasa nasional ke dalam mana mejor mejor sudah dah. Okay. Semua asyik pun. Ya, on postdoc researcher ni, tali. Kami sarap subjek ni ni optik semua. Inggris kamu sekali baca presentasi macam ni, betul tak? Bisa sah ya astronomi ni ayat counter science. Full lecture ayat itu dosa dan ayat ayat semuanya tu. Nah, kerja apa lagi? I don't know. Betul tak? Kadang-kadang pun ada kerjakan. Mana sih natural pun ada kerjakan. Abang ni dengan orang ni negara no. Ya, zat itu yang presentation. Light lesson dalam sarah selalu light dan obus kerja mana orang ni natural pun ada kerjakan. Explore dan ada kerja ber. Normally, sila light senara, buzung gizi natural natural observer menara gacor light hoj. Interaksi natural buzung gizi kaya atmosfer gana. Yang yang ayer senara gun, kalau radio sensor atas tu, buat am tenis no. Different ratio mana tu no. Maximum buzu ayer menelau negar ni al atmosfer belum menara negar, itu nasi tiga kilometer normally, kami dari surface mana tu no. Again, so sarat tengah hona masa bangun ya lo, asal kilometer tengah ya lo. Tadi normali cloud itu sekitar normali atmosfer sekitar apa? Katroposfer jam rancu, stratosfer, mesosfer, termosfer, ya lo berlalu tak? 
ኤክዞስፌር እስከ ኤክዞስፌር ድረስ ማለት ነው ግን ብዙ ጊዜ በላይት ምን ያቸው በጣም ኢንተረስቲንግ የሆኑ ነገሮች የሚፈጠሩት የመጀመሪያው 13 ኪሎሜትሮች ላይ ነው ያ ማለት ክላውድስ አየርፕሌን ፍላይ የሚያደርገው ሬይንቦ ኦብዘር የምታደርገው ሶላር ሄሎ ባለፈው ኢትዮጵያ የነበረው ሶላር ሄሎ የምታያቸው በመሙሉ ትሮፖስፌር ላይ ነው ኦብዘርቭ የምታደርጓቸው ከዛ የሚቀጥለው ሌየር ደግሞ ስትራቶስፌር ነው ያ ከ13 እስከ 48 ኪሎሜትር ላይ ነው ዴፊኒሽኑ እዛ ሌየር ላይ የምታያቸው ነገሮች እንደምን ትልቁ ፓርት ኦዞን ሌየር ነው ቶፕ ሌየሩ ማለት ነው the most important ለምን አወራው ነገር ማለት ነው ያ እንደና ከዩቪ ፕሮቴክት የሚያደርገው ሳይድ እሱ ነው የሚሆነው ከሱ አለፍ ስትሉ የምታገኛቸው ደግሞ ሜዞስፌር ነው ያው ሁላችንም እናስምናቸው ነገሮች ሹቲንግ ስታሮች ናቸው ቶርዋሪ ኮኮብ ለምናወራው ነገር ማለት ነው ያው ብዙ ሰው ያስሮኖሚ ኢንተረስት ስላለው ብዙ ብዙዎቻቸው የማይታሽታል ከዛው በኋላ ያለው አይኖስፌር ደግሞ ቴርሞስፌር እና ኤክዞስፌር አንድ ላይ አካተም ይዝ ነገር ነው ስለዚህ ኖርዘን ላይት ምንላቸው ያው ኢሮፓ ኖራ ወይም ነው ሳውዝ ወይም አውስትራሊያ ኖራ ሰው በሙሉ ያቃጫል ያ ኢሮራ ቦሪያልስ ምንላቸው ማለት ነው እና አውስትራሊያስ ሳውዝ ፓርት ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ኖርዘን ስካዮች ዘካ ኢኖርዘን ላይቶች ዘካ የነፈጠሩት ከዛ በኋላ ያው ጀስት ኖርማሊ ኢንተርናሽናል ስፔስ ስቴሽን ሃብል ስፔስ ቴሌስኮፕ ከዛ በኋላ ያለው ጂፒኤስ አሁን ትልልቆቹ ሳተላይቶች መታወቻ ከዛ በኋላ ያሉት ናቸው ከዛ በኋላ ባለ ዲስታንስ ላይ ነው ስለዚህ ላይት ከእንደዚህ አይነት አትሞስፌር ጋር ኢንተራክስ ያደርግ የሚፈጥራቸው ነገር ነው እሺ አብረን ምናው ሌላው ብዙ ጊዜ ስለ ላይት ስናወራ ስላይት ሶርሶቻችን ለኛና ማለት ምድር ላይ ላለ ነው ሁለት ናቸው የሚጀምረው ጨረቃ ነው ኖርማሊ ጨረቃ ኖርማሊ ያው ሪፍሌክቲቭ ታርግ ሪፍሌክተር ነው ኖርማሊ ናቹራል ሶርስ አይደለም ስቲም ኢቭን ኢፍ ዳርክ ሆን ጨረቃ ሙሉ ባቶን ብራሃም ባቶን ኖርማሊ እናታለን ምናው የምንድነው ያው ነጭ ሼፑን አትሊስት ሼፑን እናው አለ ሙሉ ኒሙን በሚለው ሳይድ ላይ ማለት ነው ያ የሚያወነበት ምክንያት ምንድነው ያው አልቤዶ ያልቤዶ ኮንሰፕት ስለላለና ምክንያት የአርዘ ሪፍሌክቲቪቲ 6 ታይምስ ነው ከጨረቃ አንጻር ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ከምድር ሪፍሌክት የሚሆኑ ላይት ጨረቃ ላይ ሲያርፍ ስቲል ጨረቃ ኒሙን ብትሆንም አትሊስት ሼፑን መለየት እንችላለን ጨረቃ ከኛ እስከ 60 ሬዲየስ ላይ ነው ያለችው ሌላው ትልቁ ፓርት ኦኒ ሶርስ ለኛ ለሰን ነው ኖርማሊ ሰን ፒክቸሩን ስታነሱ ያው ኖርማሊ ዋይት ላይት ነው ከተም ኦል ስፔክትሩም ኢንክሉድድ ስለሚሆን ማለት ነው ግን ኖርማሊ ሶላር ፊልተር ተቀማችሁ ፒክቸሩን ብታነሱት ሶላር ለምሳሌ ሰንስ ፎቶችን ማየት ይችላልላችሁ ዲስታንስ ነው ኖርማሊ 93 ሚሊየን ማይልስ ነው ያው ከናሳ ስለመውስታቸው እነኚህ ምታዋቸው ብዙዎች እነኚህ አይነት ፒክቸሮች ከናሳ ስለመውስታቸው ያው በማይስ ነው ወደ ኪሎሜትር ለመለወጥ እንግዲህ ቀላል ነው የሚያነው ያ ማለት 24 ሺህ ሬዲየስ ነው የሚያነው አድቫንቴጁ ምንድነው ይሄ ዲስታንስ ነው ለምሳሌ በእርዝ እና በሳን ማከለ ያለው ዲስታንስ 390 ታይምስ ነው ከሙን ካለው ዲስታንስ 390 ታይምስ ነው አት ሴም ታይም ደሞ ሳን ስታወት ማለት ነው ዳይመንሽን ስታወት ከ390 ታይምስ ላርጀር እና ደሞ ነው ኖርማሊ ስለዚህ ዲስታንስ versus like size 1 to 1 ratio አላችሁ ይሄ አድቫንቴጅ ምንድነው ቶታል ሶላር ክሊፕስ ለማይ ተጣም ይጥራዳ ለምሳሌ ማስ ቢባል ነገር አለ ስለዚህ ትንሽ ማሳብሮ እንስራ አሬንጅመንቱ ልክ እንደዚህ ነው አጥፍ ተስቡት ለምሳሌ ሰን ዘ ፈርዘስ ፖይንት ብትሆንና ጨረቃ ዘ ክሎዝስ ፖይንት ብትሆንላችሁ ኖርማሊ ኢኩላተራል ትራንግል ሲሚላር ትራንግል ይሰራል አጥፋል ይሄ ሳይድ እና ይሄ ሳይድ ሲሚላር ትራንግል ነው የሚሆነው ስለዚህ ሃይ ስኩል ጂኦሜትሪ ወደ ኋላ መልሰን ብናው ኖርማሊ ይሄ ላይን ታንጀንት የሆነ ላይን ስለሆነ 90 ዲግሪ ሰራብላችሁ ብታስቡት ይሄንን ሳይድ እችን አንግል ነው ካልኩሌት ማድረግ የምፈልገው ምክንያቱም አምብራው ማለት ነው ሸሚሸፈነው ይሄን ሳይድ ነው ስለዚህ ምንድነው ታረጉት የምጀመራ ሳይ ሲሚላር ትራንግል ቲዮሪ ተጠቅማችሁ ካልኩሌት ማድረግ ነው ሬዲየስ ኦፍ ሳን አላችሁ ይሄ ሳይድ versus ይሄ ዲስታንስ ይሄ በሙሉ ዲስታንስ ከማንጋኩል ይሆናል ሬዲየስ ኦፍ ሙን versus ዳ አምብራ ሳይድ ማለት ነው ዳ አምብራ ዲስታንስ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ሁለቱ ኖርሽ ውስጥ ስትወስዱ አምብራን ቼክ ማረሻላችሁ ያ ማለት ምን ማለት ነው የሚፈጠረውን ጥላ ቼክ ማረሻላችሁ ምን ያህል ዲስታንስ ምን ያህል ዲስታንስ እንደሚሸፍንና ምን ያህል ታይም እንደሚቆይ ካልኩሌት ማድረግ ምንችል ተዛምከት ይላል ማለት ነው 
ለክ ያን ዲስታንስ ያን ብራውን ዲስታንስ ካገኛችሁ በኋላ ቀጣም የሆነ ቀጥላ ትልቁ ትንሹ ስራም የሆነ ከዛ በኋላ ምንድነው እቺን አንግል ካልኩሌት ማድረግ ነው እቺን አንግል ካልኩሌት ለማድረግ ደግሞ ኖርማል ትራያንግል መጠቀምና ሲንስ ይሄኛው 90 ዲግሪ ስለሆነ ሳይን ካልኩሌት ማድረግ ነው ሳይን ኦፍ ሳምቲንግ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ኦፖዚት ኦቨር ሃይፖተንስ ነው ትልቁ ስለዚህ ሃይፖተንስ ይሄ ነው የኦፖዚት ሳይድ አላችሁ ስለዚህ በዛ ታግኝ ታላችሁ twice of that angle the mulu arc ይሆናል ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ሙሉ አርኩን ቶይሶ ሳይ ካልኩሌት ካደረጋችሁ በኋላ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ሙሉ አርኩን ለማግኘት ብሬዲየስ መባላት ነው አሁን ምታስቡት ሬዲየስ የትኛው ሬዲየስ ነው ይሄን ሙሉ ሬዲየስ ነው ታስቡት ያ ማለት ሴንተር ኦፍ ኤርዝ ድረስ ያለ ኤርዝ ሬዲየስ ፕላስ ጭካሪያ ዲስታንስ ተናለች ያን ለማግኘት ነው የምታደርጉት ያን ብራውን ዲስታንስ ላይ ምትቀንሱት ከሙን ወደ ኤርዝ ያለው ዲስታንስ ያ ማለት እቺ ሴንተር ነው ማለት ነው ከሴንተር ውስጥ ከዚህ ሴንተር ያለችው ማይነስ ሬዲየስ ኦፍ ኤርዝ ዚ ለስ ቀንሱት ምታገኙት እቺ ምላሽ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ያ በዛግንታችሁ ካልኩሌት ማረፍቻላችሁ ምን ያህል ቦታ እንደሚሸፈንና ለምን ያህል ጊዜ እንደሚቆይ ማየት ይችላል አንደኛው አድቫንቴጅ እሱ ነው ስለዚህ አትሞስፌራችንን አሁን ከሰንላይት ጋር ሚኖር ኢንተራክሽን ቼክ ማድረግ ስንፈልግ ኖርማሊ ሃይት በጨመረ ቁጥር density ያቹ የኤር ሞለኪል density የቀነሰ ይመጣል ያ ማለት ምን ማለት ነው number of molecule per volume ያቹ የቀነሰ ነው የሚመጣው ስለዚህ light interact የሚያደርግባቸው ሞለኪል ወይም bounce የሚያደርገው collision collide የሚያደርግባቸው ሞለኪሎች number የቀነሰ ነው ዳላ የሚመጣው ስለዚህ ስታስቡት አትሞስፌራችን transparent ነው at the same time colorless ነው ምክንያቱም colorless ማለት ምንድነው የሚሆነው ነው selective የሆነ wavelength wavelength selective የሆነ filter አይደለም ሰዚ all pass filter አድርጎ ታችሁ ነው ታስቡት ሁሉም frequency ማለፍ የሚችልበት ወይም ሁሉም wavelength ማለፍ የሚችልበት አይነት medium አድርታችሁ ነው ታስቡት ስለዚ የምትያውት እያንዳንዱ ሞለኪል colorless ነው ያ ማለት nitrogen oxygen carbon monoxide carbon dioxide የምትላችሁ እያንዳንዱ air ላይ ያሉት ሞለኪሎች ደግሞ colorless ናቸው ምክንያቱም ቀለም በቀለም ምንም አይነት ቀለም አታየው ግን sunlight normally material ላይ energy ስለሆነ ማለት ያው energy ስለላለ ከማቴሪያል ጋር ኢንተራክት ያደርጋል ያ ምንድን ላይት ማተር ኢንተራክሽን ነው እሱ ነው ስለዚህ ሰንላይት አይዘር ሪፍሌክት ሊያደርግ ይችላል ወይም ስካተር ሊያደርግ ይችላል ሪፍሌክት የሚያደርገው ስካተር የሚያደርገው ከምን እንደሆነ ትልኝ አንደኛው ኤር ሞለኪሎች አሉት ሁለተኛው ደግሞ ደስ ፓርቲክል ነው ደስ ፓርቲክል ምን እንላቸው ኖርማሊ ከኢንደስትሪ የሚወጡ ፖሉሽንም ሊሆን ይችላል ሳንድ ስቶርሞች ማhall የሚወጡት ሁሉ ማይስ ደስ ስቶርሞች ማሰውን ያለባቸው እያንዳንዱ ላይት ስካተርድ ስለምትሆን ከሰንላይት የምትመጣው ማለት ነው የዛ ሁሉ ኮምባይንድ ኢፌክት ምንድን ነው የሚያደርገው ዴታይም ስካይም ብራይተር ነው የሚያደርገው ስለዚህ ዴታም ስካይ ብራይተር ስለሚሆን ባክግራውንዳችሁ በሙሉ ምንድን ነው የሚሆነው ሸፈናል ኦቨር ዌም ይሆናል ስለዚህ ቀን ላይ ስታር ማታዩት ለዛ ነው አትሞስፌር ባይኖራችሁ ግን ለምሳሌ እንደ ጨረቃ ቢሆን ወይም ሌሎች አትሞስፌር ሌሎች አይነት ፕላኔቶች ቢሆን አይ ዶንት ኖው ምን ማይነት አትሞስፌር ያላችሁ ነገሮች አስቡና እንደዛ ቢሆን ኖሮ ቀን ላይም አትሊስት ስታሮችን ታያላችሁ ኖርማሊ ማለት ነው ናይት ስካይ ዳርክ ለምን ይሆን አላችሁ ካልኩሌት በታስቡት ማለት ነው የሆን ላይት ሶርስ ቢኖራችሁና ያን ላይት ሶርስ ማለት ነው ሙቭ አውት ብታደርጉት አሁን ለምሳሌ ሰንስ ሰን አለች የሆነ ፖይንት ለልጅ ስለዚህ ለናንተ ኮንስታንት የሆነ ሳይዝ ሆነን ታስቡት እቺ ሰን ሙቭ ባደርጋት የሆነ ፖይንት ላይ size distance square a decrease yaderga at the same time kaza mi meta intensity wem luminosity relative luminosity 1 over 9 3 times move marrego 1 over 9 iqenesal at the same time area 1 over 9 iqenesal selezi bitakafulut 1 over 9 over 1 over 9 bitaregut 1 ne meta oresh selezi kaza kasan mitagenyut light raqechim qarrabechim ekun no mitagenyut ya surface luminosity minela nager mat ያ ሰለሚሆን ለምሳሌ ከእያንዳንዱ የምታገኙት ስታር ላይት ተመሳሳይ ነው የሚሆነው ብራይትነስ ግን ዩኒቨርሳችን ኤክስፓንድ ስለሚያደርግ ኖርማሊ ከዛ የሚመጣው ላይት ከእያንዳንዱ ስታር የሚመጣው ላይት እናንተ ጋር ማለት ነው የሚፈጅበት ታይም ረጅም ስለሚሆን ከነኛ የመጣው ላይት እናንተ ጋር ስለማይደርስ ጨለማ ሆኖ ነው የሚታያችሁ የማት አስካይ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ኖርማሊ ሁሉ ነገር ሰመራይስ እናደርገው ማለት ነው ከዛም ታገኙት ላይት ዋይት ላይት ነው ዋይት ላይት ደሞ አትሞስፌር ሲጋባ ማለት ነው ስካተርን ባውንስ ያረጋል ይሄ ነው ምድር ላይ ምን ያቸው ፋስኔቲንግ የሆኑ ነገሮች እየሚሰጠን 
So the electromagnetic wave, like light is not normally, vibrating mirror magnetic in electric field. You know. Magnetic field, the electric field, the whole exam, orthogonal nature. Pull it to the moon, direction of motion, lemon, the lunar, orthogonal, let me hold. Basic definition is minale, wavelength is a minal concept. Wavelength is a minal concept. Wavelength is a low point of mahal, yeminor or distance. Now, yaha distance now, yandan dun kalam, defining mirago. So let's see, kalam set tauru, metauru, either frequency, when wavelength is now, frequency now, wavelength is related, but speed of light is related, so let me hold. The same way it worry in a tauru. So let's see. And the electromagnetic spectrum is not sensitive to the visible light, but it is small to the region. It is not sensitive to the visible light. 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 And the optical sensitive light is not sensitive to the visible light. It is not sensitive to the visible light. So, the rate of 700 nanometers is 650 to 700 nanometers. Kazi betach demo set met omen de nemi hono, ultra violet nemi hono, ka violet betach, ultra malet, katlo malet no, ka violet katlo, ultra violet light no. UV, wem, UV minelo, nagar malet no, ultra violet, wem, UV minelo. UV buzu somiak omen de no, yo, kaz ahi mi metal skin color, skin burn nemi hono buzu no no. UV betam, frequency, wavelength is yek and seven metak water. Frequency is a very important thing. It's more energetic than the other thing. It's more energetic than the other thing. It's more energetic than the other thing. So it's more energetic than the other thing. It's more energetic than the other thing. Highly concentrated light absorbs. In the case of the UV, the transition is normally break line break set up and normally continuous you want to wave now so let's continue you want to squeeze on it just x-ray and tagging x-ray normally your body action penetrate the other guy born at home yeah you want to continue to hone a bombardment like us so let's do the analysis x-ray this is the x-ray minus us of the cancer we got a little zone look at molecular genome to meet it your mother capability and the high energy slow Kasu extensi nalar garam mu gamma ray naga ni ada. Di other side ramu sistem itu, ini ramu tagging itu ramu sari ini ramu sara betul wavelengths awam ramu sari infrared. Inframarat below ray ramu sari. Ramu sari inframarat below ramu sari radio alat itu. Selagi karir betah cium tagging itu like infrared ramu ni. Infrared ramu terlalu cium. Zuk zai sama ni aku ramu ni banyak signature ramu ni aku cium. Kaza setal fum ini ramu tagging aku cium radio wave buat cium ramu tagging aku cium. Zikalam sali set matu microwave nak kerja macam tak gini, radio wave macam hal macam tu. Micro ni nak small macam tu, small wave macam tu. Acer wave macam tu, nacer nacer nacer. So lagi ke sentimeter jamuros, kemeter jamuros, kemeter jamuros tu nacer nacer. Kaza walam tak gini, kalau radio wave tu, FM M tak dapat tu drum. Aro no buzo sentuh cacu, ada macam cacu kaya asrama sastra sastra disebelah indo nacer. Kita ni ada buzo cacu. Buzo ni ada dro radio cacu ni. Tune senarai tu zaman macam tu, kan? Tune senarai cakap macam tu. Tune senarai cuma dengan macam tu, selective ni macam tu, selective frequency selective ni macam tu. Yang mana tu, yang mana bank of filter ada macam tu? Yang filter yang ada macam tu, wavelength itu betul macam tu. Kalau macam tu, kalau tanya tuning mekanisme macam tu, tu zaman macam tu, kan? Tune senarai mana fine tune macam tu, macam tu. Tune macam tu, kalau just center wavelength itu, macam tu. Minat kita macam tu. Fine tune macam tu, kalau macam tu, kalau wavelength itu, mana hal band itu sahijin tu, kan? Mikatun, ya sah faham juga lah tu kotor mungkin dalam hal no noise art tarik galah tu. Em lela channel le interfering mereka channel ini betul betul. The same for all the TV, black and white TV itu semula tu kono no way nampar. The same mana tu negara tarik gitu. Sit kayu itu telah ya channel no kayu itu. Jadi frequency tuning di mana ya no. Jadi kalam set tauru normal ini wavelength is nampar. Kotor nampar. Wajah mana kau negara sen mata? Ya betul sot iya ke mungkin no. Ya sangat iya ke. Especially leh sangat. Bisa kita ikut semua dengan no, sama ilmu dan sama ayahkan. Bisa cari cuma melihat selama apa lagi dengan no, sembel, bukan no no. Normal itu sama ayahkan, betul mungkin niat, dengan no, rayu sekali dengan no. Kalau kita sama ayahkan, kita sama ayahkan. 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 The gamma tells me that the violet, ultraviolet, and the violet more reflected nature. 
ስካተርድ ናቸው የሚከተለው ብሉ ነው ሬድ እና የሎ ምናም ጥላቸው በመሆኑ ለስ ስካተርድ ናቸው ስለዚህ ሁለት አይነት ቀለም ነው የሚታዩት ለምሳሌ ስካይሊን የሚጀምረው ኖርማሊ ሰንራይዝ እና ሰንሴት ላይ የሚታዩት ሁለት ቀለማት አሉ ሌላ ጊዜ ደግሞ ዴይ ታይም ላይ የሚታዩት ቀለም አለ ለምሳሌ ሰንላይት ሎ ሆራይዘን ላይ ከሰን ሎ ሆራይዘን ላይ ካለች ምንድነው የሚሆነው ደስካይ የምታዩት ሰማይ ማለት ነው ከጸሃይ ራቅ ያለ ሰማይ በመሆኑ ምንድነው የሚሆነው በጣም ብሉና ዳርክ ይሆናል ገን ወደ ወደ ሆራይዘን የየመጣችሁ ቤታችሁ ቁጥር ምንድነው የሚሆነው ዴንስ የሆነ ኤር ስለሚያጋጥማችሁ ሞር ላይክ ስካተርድ ስለሚሆን ሰማይ ምንም ሆነ ጀምሮ ሰማይ መሆን ይተውና ውሃ ሰማይ ምንለው ነጭ ሰማይ ወደ ምንለው አይነት ነገር ነው የሚጠጋው ምክንያቱም እንደነው ሞር ላይክ ስካተርድ ስለሚሆን ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ሬሾን ብትሰሩ እዚህ ጋር ኖርማሊ ተላዩ ወብሌንግዞችን ሲሰር ከታቹ ሬሾን ዘ ሴም ሞለኪል ነምበር ኖራቹ ዘ ሴም ፖላራይዚቢሊቲ ኖራቹ ዘ ሴም ማይነት ሬዲስ ቢኖራቹ ሬሽን ስትወስቱ ማለት ነው ብሉ ላይት ለምሳሌ 5 ታይምስ ነው ሪፍሌክትድ የሚሆነው ሪፍራክትድ የሚሆነው ስካተርድ የሚሆነው ሶል ከሬድ ላይት አንጻር ማለት ነው ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ሬድ ሰማይ ከማይት ይልቅ ብሉ ሰማይ የማይት ቸርጅ ፕሮባቢሊቲያቸው 5 ታይምስ ጥፍ ነው የሚሆነው ስለዚህ ብዙ ፓርት የምታዩት ምንድነው የሚሆነው ሰማይ ነው የሚሆነው ማለት ነው ከሬድ አንጻር ግን አሁን ማን መጥ ትልቅ ጥያቄ ማሳተም የምችሉት ነገር ማለት ነው ቫዮሌት ሞር ሪፍሌክትድ ከሆነ ከብሉ አንጻር ለምን ስካይ ቫዮሌት አለሆነን ብላችሁ የሚጀም ማጥያቄ ማሳተም ይችላልላችሁ ከቱም ሪዝነብል የሆነ ጥያቄ ስለሆነ ማለት ነው ሁለት ሪዝን አለው ቫዮሌት ስካይ ለማይት ምክንያቱ ማለት ነው አንደኛ ያ አይን ሴንሲቲቪያችን ነው አይናችን ኖርማሊ ፍሎይድ የሆነ ሴንሰር ነው ምክንያቱም ሪስፖንድ የሚያደርገው በጣም ለተወሰኑ ወይ ቀለሞች ነው ያ ኖርማሊ ምንም ይሆነው ብሉ ሬድ እና ግሪን ላይ ነው ሴንሲቲቪ የሚሆነው ከዛ በኋላ ያለው ብትያውት ለምሳሌ ቫዮሌትም ብትያውት ሴንሲቲቪቲያችን በጣም ስሞል ነው ከሬድ በኋላ ያለው ኢንፍራሬድን ቼክ ውታረጉት ራሱ በጣም ስሞል ነው ለምሳሌ ንቦች ብዙ ጊዜ ለምሳሌ ዩቪ ነው የሚያውት አናንስ ኔኮች ደግሞ ለምሳሌ ኢንፍራሬድን ነው የሚያውት ቪዚብል ላይት አይታያቸው ለምሳሌ ውሾች ራሱ ኖርማሊ ቀለም አይኑ ለምሳሌ ከቱም ያይናቹ ሴንሰሮች ኮኖች ማለት ነው ዲፔንድ ያረጋል የትኛው ዌብ ላንጉዌጅ ላይ በጣም ሴንሲቲቭ እንደሆነ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ አንደኛው ሪዝን እሱ ነው አይናቹ በጣም ሴንሲቲቭ የሚሆነ ለብሉ ለአር እና ለጂ ነው ቴሌቪዥን ለዛ ነው ቀላል የሆነ ፕሮዲዩስ ለማድረግ ነው ከቱም ሶስቱ ሶስቱን ለምሳሌ ቲቪ ስክሪን ብታዩት ሶስት ዶቶች ናቸው አንድ ላይ ተቀምጠ አርጂቪ ዶት ፎስፎረስ ዶቶች ይቀመጡ እና እነሱ ናቸው ሪፕሊኬት እየደረጉ እነሱን ስካን በማድረግ ማለት ነው በኤሌክትሮን ስካን በማድረግ በዛ ነው ካለር ቲቪ የምትፈጥሩት ሲምፕል የሚሆነው ለዛ ነው ሁለተኛው ደግሞ ሪዝን ምንድነው ለምሳሌ ይሄ ሰን ስፔክትራም ነው ኮንቲኒየስ ስፔክትራም ነው ቼክ ስናደርገው ማለት ነው እንደምታፍ ማለት ነው ሞር ከሰን ምታገኙት ሞር ሬዲሽን ኢን ተርምስ ኦፍ ግሪን ነው ከዛ በኋላ ብሉ ነው ዶሚኔት የሚያደርገው ቫዮሌት እና የምሳሰሉ በጣም ስሞል ናቸው ኢንፍራሬድም ሳይሰጥ መጥቶ በጣም ስሞል ነው የሚሆነው አሁን ሌላ ጥያቄ ማሳተፍ ይችላል ለምሳሌ ለምድን ሰማይ ስለዚህ አረንጓዴ ማይ ሆነው ብዙ ላይ ከሰን የሚመጣው ላይ አረንጓዴ ከሆነ ለምድን ነው አረንጓዴ ማን ነው ብላችሁ መጣይክ ይችላልችሁ ምክንያቱም ቼክ ብታደርጉ ለምሳሌ ብሉ እና ግሪንን ሬሾን ቼክ ብታደርጉ አትሊስት ብሉ ትዋይስ ነው ስካተርድ የሚሆነ ከግሪን አንጻር ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ሰማይ ሞር ዶሚኔትድ ይሆናል ማለት ነው በዛ ምክንያት ስለዚህ አንደኛው ጥያቄ መለስም ማለት ነው የተፈጠረው አንደኛው ጥያቄ ስለዚህ ቀድም ያልኳችሁ ነገር ይሄን የሚሆነው ለምሳሌ ይሄን ፎቶ ጣዋት ላይ ነው እናነሳው ጣጣት ላይ ወይም ሳይ ወደ ውሃ አካሄዳችሁ ወይም ኤኒ ቦታ ላይ ሄዳችሁ ብታነሱት ጣዋት ላይ ብታነሱት ማለት ነው የመጀመሪያ ፓርት የሚሆነው የምታዩት ነገር እንደው ሰንራይዝ እና ሰንሴት ብዙ ጊዜ ሬድ ወይም ኦሬንጅ አይነት ካለር ነው የሚኖረው ለምድና ምክንያቱም ዴንስ የሆነ አዩ ወደ ታች ዝቅ ባላችሁ ቁጥር ምንድን የሚሆነው ሞር ሞለኪል ፐር ቮሊም ስለምታገኙ ሞር ስካተርንግ ይኖራል ስለዚህ shorter wave length ዞች more scattered ይሆኑና longer wave length ዞች travel ያደርጋሉ long distance መሄድ ስለሚችሉ ማለት ነው ከlonger wave length ስለሆነ ስለዚህ ቀሪው ብሉ የመሳሰሉት reflected ይሆኑና ቀሪውን የሚቀራቹ ምንድነው የሚሆነው yellow orange ናም ነው የምትላቸው orange yellow እና red part ነው የሚሆነው ማለት ነው የሚቀራቹ ስለዚህ አይናቹ ጋር የሚደርሰው ነው ለዛ ነው sunrise እና sunset normally red የሚሆነ ወይም orange አይነት ካለ ነው ከዛ በኋላ ግን density የቀነሰ ስለሚመጣ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ለምሳሌ የምታገኙት ለምሳሌ ስቲል ዴንሲቲ እዚህ ጋር ስትሮንግ ስለሆነ የምታዩት ሰማዩ ለምሳሌ ወደ ውሃ አይነት ሰማይ ነው ለምሳሌ እንደዚህ አይነት ወደ ውሃ አይነት ቀለም ነው የሚቀየረው 
ውሃን ኮን ቀለም ያለው ኖርማሊ ግን አይደር ወደ ዋይት አካባቢ ነው የሚመጣለው ከቱ ሞር ስካተሪንግ ስለሚኖር ማለት ነው ከዛ ያራቃች ስትመጡ ግን ወደ ላይ ከፍ ይያላች ወደ ዘንት ከፍ ይያላች በመጣችሁ ቁጥር ነው እና ሞለኪላር ዴንሲቲያችሁ እየቀነሰ ስለሚመጣ ብሉ ላይት ነው በደንብ የምታገኙ ስለዚህ ኤን አንት ፌኖሚናችን በቀላሉ ማየት ይችላልላችሁ ሌላው ደግሞ ምንድነው ኤሮሶሎችን ነው ቼክ ምናርገው ለምሳሌ አሁን ስካን ያወራ ነው ስሞለር ሞለኪላር ስሞል ሞለኪሎች ለምን አራቸው ነው ኢን ተርምስ ኦፍ ዘ ኦርደር ኦፍ ዌቭ ሌንግዝ የሆኑ ሳይዝ ያላቸው ነገሮች ማለት ነው ቀጥሎ ምታገኙት እንደና ኤሮሶሎች ነው ምታገኙት ኤሮሶሎች ደግሞ ብዙ ጊዜ ምታገኛቸው ከ1 እስከ 100 ታይምስ ኦፍ ዘ ዌቭ ሌንግዝ ኦፍ ዘ ላይት ነው እነኝ ዌቭ ሌንግዝ ኦፍ ዘ ላይት ነው የሚሆኑት ኤን ክሉድም ያረጋል ለምሳሌ አዋራ ዋተር ድሮፕሌስ ለምሳሌ ዝና ወይም ለምሳሌ ሲኖር ሌላ ደግሞ አሲዲክ እና ሶቲ ሚስት አይነት ነገሮች ማለት ነው ብዙ ጊዜ እነኚህ የምታገኛቸው ኦሽና ካዋቢ ነው ብዙ ጊዜ የምታገኛቸው ሌላው ስሞክ ነው በርን የሚያርግ ይሆን ይሄን ነገር ቢኖር ስፔሻሊ የሚካኤል ከ ሄደር ሚካኤል एवरीबॉडी ማቃጠል ሲጀምር ያን ጊዜ የምታገኝት ስሞክ ኤሮሶል ነው የሚያነው ካሌሎቹ ሞሊኪሎች የሚለየው ለምን እንደው ሳይዛቸው ትልቅ ስለሆነ ሁሉንም ዌቭ ሌንግዝ ኢኳሊ ነው ስካተርድ የሚያደርጉት ስለዚህ ሁሉንም ዌቭ ሌንግዝ ደምራቹ ማለት ምንድነው የሚሆነው ማለት ነው ኦፖዚት ኦፍ ፕሪዝም ነው እየሰራቹ ያላችሁ ስለዚህ ቢም ኮምባይነር እየሰራቹ ስለሚሆነው ምንድነው የሚሆነው የምታገኙት ቀለም ዋይት ነው የሚሆነው ስፔሻሊ ለምሳሌ የሆነ ደን ከተቃጠለ ምናምን በኋላ ማለት ነው ስታውት ጭሱ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ዋይት ነው ሆኖ ነው የምታውቁት ምክንያቱም ሁሉንም ላይት እኩል ስካተርድ ስለሚያደርግ የምታውቁት ነገር ዋይት ላይት ነው የሚሆነው ሌላው አሪፍ ፊኖሚና ደግሞ ብዙዎቻችን ምናቀው ምንድነው ኤሮይል ነው ለምሳሌ ብዙ ጊዜ የሚሆነው እንደው ለምሳሌ ጻሃይን ስታውት ቀልን ስታውት አጠገቡ ማለት ነው ትንሽ ደመና ወይም ነገር ወይም በጣም ስሞክ ምናም ነገር ካለ ማለት ነው አጠገቡ ደግሞ ነጭ ነው የሚታውት አንደኛ ጊዜ ለምሳሌ የካሜራ ኢፌክት የሆነና ቀለም ሁሉ ይዞባት ይመጣል በከተም ዲፍራክሽን የሚያርግ ማለት ነው ሌንስ ኦፕቲክሳቸው ላይ ማለት ነው ግን ኖርማሊ ባአናቹ ስታውት ባአን እንዳታዩ ጻሃይን አደረ ከተም አናቹ ነው የምታጠፉት ግን ጻሃይን በጃቹ በጣታቹ ሸፍናቹ ማለት ነው ቼክ ብታደርጓት ለምሳሌ ምንድነው የምታውት ይሄን አይነት ዋይት የሆነ ሰርፋ ፓሽ ነው የምታውት ካለርለስ ነው ኖርማሊ ስለዚህ እንደዛ አይነት ኢፌክቲቭ ቼክ ማረሻላችሁ ኤሮሶልስ ላይ ሲመጡ ሌላው ኤቭሪዴይ የሆነ ፌኖሚና እናገኛቸው ክላውዶች ናቸው ክላውድ ብዙ ጊዜ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ፎርም የሚሆነው ያ ፕሪሲፒቴሽን ኤቫፖሬሽን ኖራል ከዛ በኋላ ኮንደንሴሽን ይከተላል አይነት ነገር ነው ስለዚህ ላርጅ ድሮፕሌት ኦፍ ዋተር ነው የምታገኙት ወተር ድሮፕሌት ብቻ አይደለም የሚኖረው right condition ካለ ስቲል አይስ ክሪስታል ምን ራሱ ፎርም ያደርጋል ስለዚህ ደመና ስለታውት ኖርማሊ ማለት ነው white ነው ምክንያቱም ለምን እንደው ሁሉንም ዌቭ ሌንግዝ ኢኳሊ ነው ምንም ያረጋው ስካተርድ የሚያረጋው ስለዚህ ሰን ኖርማል ቀለሙን ማጣጣው ደመና ላይ ለዛ ነው ስፔሻሊ ቲን የሆነ ደመና ስታገኙ ሁሉም ነገር እኩል ነው ሪፍሌክት የሚያረጋው ስለዚህ ጻሃይ ስቲል ዋይት ሆና ነው የምታገኘው ስለዚህ ናቹራል ካተር ሮን ሪቴን ታርጋዴት ለዛ ነው ብዙ ጊዜ ደመና ናቹራል ኤንዲ ፊልተር ምን ነው ማለት ነው ኤንዲ ፊልተር ማለት ኒውትራል ዴንሲቲ ፊልተር ማለት ነው ካሜራ ያላችሁ ልጆች አይሮ ነው ኤንዲ ፊልተር ገስታችሁ ታቃላችሁ ሎንግ ኤክስፖዠር ቴክ ፒቸር ለመስራት ወይም ኦፕቲክስ ላይ ሰርታችሁ ምታቁ ልጆች ያው የሌዘር የሌዘር ፓወርን መቀነስ ትፈልጉ ቫሪያብል ማረክ ትፈልጉ ኤንዲ ፊልተር ነው የምትጠቀሙት ያ ማለት ነው ላይትን በተሰነ ደረጃ አቲኔት ያረጋን የሚመጣላችሁ እሱ ብቻ አይደለም ለምሳሌ ክሮሞ ክሎሮክሮማቲክ እንት ግመነጽሮች ያላችሁ ልጆች ማለት ነው ያ ማለት ምን ነው ቤት ውስጥ ነጭ ሆነና ወደ ውጪ ስትወጡ ጥቁር የሚሆን መነጽር ካጋጠማችሁ ስቲል ፓርት ኦፍ ኤንዲ ፊልተር ነው ግን ሁሉም ክላውድ ነጭ ሆነ ጻይ ሰጣቸዋል ማለት አይደለም ምክንያቱም ዴንስ የሆነ በመጣ ቁጥር ማለት ነው አብዞርብ ያደርጋል አብዞርብ ሲያደርግ ደግሞ ምንድነው የሚሆነው የምታገኙት ቀለም ዳርክ የሆነ የሪጂን ነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ኤን ማይሻላችሁ ናቹራል ፌሮሚናል ታይ ከዚህ በኋላ ምናውራው ምንድነው አትሞስፌሪክ ኢፌክት ሌላ ደግሞ ከላይት ጋር ለኢንተራክሽን ምናውራው ፖላራይዜሽን ነው ለምሳሌ ከሰን የሚመጣው ላይት አምፖላራይዝ ነው ምንለው ያ ማለትን ማለት ነው ኤሌክትሪክ ፊልዱ ዲፈረንት ዳይሬክሽን ነው ኦሲሌት የሚያረጋው ለምሳሌ እዚህ ጋር የምታዩት ነገር ማለት ነው አንደኛው ዲስ ሳይድ ኦሲሌት ያረጋል ሌላኛው ዲስ ሳይድ ኦሲሌት ያረጋል ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ የመጀመሪያው ሆሪዘንታሊ ኦሲሌት የሚያረካ ሆነ የሚቀጥለው ፓርት ደግሞ በተወሰነ አንግል ሮቴት 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 ይሆነ ነው የሚመጣው ስለዚህ ይሄ አምፖላራይዝ ላይት ነው ምንለው sunlight unpolarized light ነው ግን unpolarized light polarized ሆኖ ይችላል ያ ማለት ምን ማለት ነው 
ኤሌክትሪክ ፊልዱ በየጣጣቀ ከመሄድ ይልቅ አንድ የተወሰነ አጣጫም መርጦ በዛ አጣጫም መሄድ ይችላል ያም የሆነውም እሽ ነው ፖላራይዘር ፊልተር ተጠቀሙ ነው ስለዚህ ላይት ሜታል ኤኒ ላይት ሜታል ዋይት ላይትም ባሉት ሌዘርም ይሁን የሚያስፈልግ ይሁን አምፖላራይዝድ ከሆነ ፖላራይዝድ ፊልተር ተጠቀሙ እንደሚያደርገው አንደኛው ዳይሬክሽን ትራንስሚቲቪቲ 100% ይሆናል ሌሎቹ ትራንስሚቲቪቲያቸው ወደ ዜሮ ይጣጋል ያ ማለት ማለት ነው አንዱ ላይት ብቻ ተጠቅማቹ አንደኛው ዳይሬክሽን ብቻ ተጠቅማቹ አንድ ማለት መርጣቹ ትራንስሚት ታደርጉታላችሁ ስለዚህ እዚህ ጋር ምን ተያይዘው አንደኛው ቨርቲካል ነው አንደኛው ሆሪዞንታል ነው ሁለት አይነት ነው ያለን ኖርማሊ ቨርቲካሊ ፖላራይዝድ ሊኒየርሊ ፖላራይዝድ የሆኑ ሁለት አይነት ናቸው ኤክስ እና ዋይ ነው ስለዚህ ኤክስ እና ዋይ ሊኒየርሊ ፖላራይዝድ ይሆናል እናስብና ኤክስ እና ዋይ ዋይ ብቻ የሚመረጥ ከሆነ ዋይ ብቻ በዚህ ወኩል ይላል ማለት ነው ፈረሪ ቨርቲካሊ ኦፍሴት የሚያረግ ኤሌክትሪክ ፊልት ታገኛላችሁ ሊኒየርሊ ፖላራይዝድ ብቻ ላይት አይደለም ያለን ሌላ ሰርኩላሪ ፖላራይዝድ ላይት አለን ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ዘ ሴም ኢና ዋይ ፊልዳቹ እኩል አይነት መጠን ያለው ስለዚህ ሬዲየስ እኩል የሆነ ጂኦሜትሪ ንገሩን ብላችሁ ሰርክል ለምትል ሌላ ደግሞ ተጨማሪ ምን አለ ኤሌክትሪካሊ ፖላራይዝድ ላይት አለ ያ ማለት ማለት ነው አንደኛው ሳይድ አንደኛው ሬዲየስ ስሞለር ይሆነና ከሌላኛው ሬዲየስ ደግሞ ላርጀር ይሆናል ማለት ነው ኤሊፕስ ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ናቹራሊ ማለት ነው ፖላራይዘሮች ናቹራል ፖላራይዘሮች ብቻ ሁሉ ለምሳሌ እንት ነው ውሃ እየተጠራቀመ ውሃ መንገል ለተጠራቀመ ውሃ ወይም ሃይክ ላይ ምናምን ነገር ሄዳችሁ ብታዩ ማለት ነው አምፖላራይዝድ የሆኖ ላይት ውሃ ላይ ሲያርፍ ውሃው ሴሌክት ያረጋል አንዱ ላይት ለምሳሌ እዚህ ጋር እንደምታዩት ማለት ነው ቨርቲካሉ ማለት ነው ኦሲሌት እንዲያርግ የተፈለገው አቲኔት ይሆንና ሆሪዞንታሉ ማለት ነው ሞር ፕሮናንስድ ይሆናል ያ ማለት ሞር ኦሲሌት ያደርጋል ለምሳሌ ይሄንን ማለት ምን ይችላል ተምሳሌ መነጽር ለምሳሌ ፖላራይዝድ ሰንግላስ አሉ ምን እንደሚያደርጉት ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ኦሲሌት የሚያደርገው ቨርቲካል እና ሆሪዞንታል ላይት እናንተ መነጽር ቢኖር መነጽራቸው ቨርቲካሉን ብቻ የሚያሳልፍ ከሆነ ሆሪዞንታሉን በሙሉ ብሎክ ያደረገና ቨርቲካሉን ታገኝታላችሁ ስለዚህ ብዙ ሰው ብዙ ጊዜ ማለት እንደዚህ አይነት መነጽሮች እንደሚያደርጉት ለምሳሌ ብሉ ላይት የስካይን ብሉ ላይት ሞር ብሉ አርግት ሆኖ የሚያሳይ ወይም ግሪን ላይትን ሞር ግሪን አርግት ሆኖ የሚያሳይ ነው እንግዲህ አንዱ ፊልድ ብቻ ስለሚመርጥ ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ የፖላራይዜሽን የእንደዚህ አይነት መነጽሮችን ኢፌክት ማወቅ ከፈለጋችሁ ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ይሄ መንገል ላይ የነበረው ውሃ የነሳ ነው እዚህ ጋር እንደምታውቱ ማለት ነው ሞር ሪፍሌክሽን አለ ስለዚህ በየዳይሬክሽኑ ስለሚ ዳይሬክቲቭ ፊልዱ ሞር ሪፍሌክሽን ይኖራል ግን ልክ መነጽሩን አርግታችሁ ካሜ በካሜራ በተመሰት ግን ማለት ነው አትሊስት ለምሳሌ ሆሪዞንታሉ ሪፍሌክት የሚሆነ ሆሪዞንታል ሪፍሌክት የሚሆነ ላይት ብሎክ ይደረግና ከቨርቲካል ብቻ የሚመጣው ነው የሚታገኝ ስለዚህ ሞር ክሪስፒየር የሆነ ኢሜጅ ታገኛላችሁ ማለት ነው ሌላው ፓርሻሊ ፖላራይዝድ የሆነ ላይት ማግኔት ይችላልላችሁ ለምሳሌ ከጻይም ይመጣው less polarized የሆነ light በሌላኛው ዳይሬክሽን ብታዩት ባንድ ሁለቱ ማለት ፊልፊት ሁሉ በጻይ ዳይሬክሽን ያለውን አይታችሁ ማለት ነው less polarized ስለሆነ more white shine color ነው የሚታየው ግን ተቃራኒው ሳይል ብታዩት ግን reflected ሆኖ የሚሄደው more polarized ስለሚሆን የሚታገኙት ምንድነው blueish የሆነ light ነው የሚታገኙት ለምሳሌ ቀላል ነገር ፖላራይዘር ለምሳሌ የካሜራ ፖላራይዘር ነው ወስዳችሁ ማለት ነው ቼክ ብታደርጉት ለምሳሌ አውትሳይድ ምታያት ባይናችሁ ምታያት እንደዚህ አይነት ካላር ነው ምታያት እንከቱን ዎሽድ አውት የሆነ ብሉ ነው እዚህ ጋር ዋይት ሞር ዋይት ነው እዚህ ሞር የራቃችሁ በላችሁ ቁጥር ዴንስቲ እየጨመረ ስለሚመጣ ብሉሽ ታያላችሁ ወይስ ወተር ላይ እየመጣሽ ተተይዶ ግን አረንጓዴ አይነት ነገር ነው ወተር ካላርለስ ወደ ሆነ ዋይት ሆነ ትመጣላችሁ ግን ፖላራይዘር አርግታችሁ ቼክ ብታደርጉት ማለት ነው ያዞራችሁ ቼክ ብታደርጉት በተወሰነ አንግል ያዞራችሁ ቼክ ብታደርጉት ማለት ነው ብሎክ የሚያደርገበት ሬት ስለሚለያይ ለምሳሌ እዚ ዳይሬክሽን ላይ ስትደርሱ ማለት ነው ይሄ ሞር ብሉሽ ሆነ ግሪን ነው ሰታውት ሞር ግሪንሽ ነው ይሄ ከዚህኛው ጻር ነው ይሄኛው ስታውት ዳርክ የሆነ ግሪን አይት ነገር ነው የሚያመስለ ፖላራይዘር ኢፌክታቸው ይሄ ነው ለምሳሌ ይሄን ፒክቸር ስናነሳ ብታውት ማለት ነው ፖላራይዘሩ ስታዞሩት ማለት ነው እዚህ ጋር ምታውት በጣም ዳርክ ነው የሚሆነው ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ቨርቲካሉ ሞር ትራንስሚትድ ይሆናል ሆሪዘንታል ብሉ ስለዚህ ቨርቲካሊ ዳውንዋርድ እየሄዳችሁ በላችሁ ቁጥር ማለት ነው ሞር ብሉ ይሆናችሁ ምክንያት ወይም ወደ ላይ የወጣችሁ በላችሁ ቁጥር ማለት ነው ሞር ዳርክ ይሆናችሁ ምክንያት ሳይድ ወይስ ተያውት ግን ከምንም ይሆነ ፀሐይ ያካውኝ ነው የነበረችው ስለዚህ ከፀሐይ ከነበረችው በሳይድ ስትሄዱ ማለት ነው ዋይትሽ ይሆነ አይደለና ብሉሽ ይሆነ ነው እንደገና ዋይትሽ ነው የሚሆነው ስለዚህ ብሎክ እየደረገ ያለው ሞር ወደ ቨርቲካ ሳይድ ነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ስትያውት ኖርማሊ ካሜራውን ስትፎቶና አስተቻች ስትያውት 
polarization ايه نوع light polarized بيم هونو بزين في مكان يميك تلاو من هيدا وندنوس لكلاور نمنا ورا لذي كلاور لست مات قوم دن نمي هونو form يهونو everybody اندم ياكو ياو sunlight heat up يارغال water evaporate يارغال كذا condensate اللي هونا light ناغل ايه high school نو cloud type type of asra in general low depend me are going to know on height they know height and that type of height and they are not your concentration of chicken that low like low level in the last cloud in the last of stratus strata cumulus cumulus in both stratus seems as a little much of middle in the last of the more alto we got them alto one at height now that in order high homes part of the more in the natural alto stratus alle alto cumulus alle Kerja mana extremely high home sebab mu serious nak cakap serious mana itu very high mana tu. Jadi serious strata selalu bezug zem balaf aku yang nabi orang nanti yang nabi orang like solar hello ni fatur hal especially ni yang nak cakap serious cloud itu tak yang especially bezug zem nasi nak cakap ni fatur mungkin tu ice crystal full of ice crystal nak cakap nasi. Jadi serious cloud itu tak cakap tam tin nak cakap tam kacau nak cakap wispy cloud nak cakap Bisik zin dalam itu nak anda lawan, anda tidak negar negar nama yang home aktif mera gugur mas na. Di lainnya hurut yang yang melalui kelas atau melalui stratus cloud atau macam ni, ni horizontal itu tak extended demi home macam tu. Misalnya sama yang bumbu shifting demi mera gugur negar tu ni macam tu. Tiga macam tu. Vertikali bezu ahedum, betul small sheet nama yang home. Kerana jam buat anda macam pun itu kan boleh lah bezu kafai tu. Kemas cloud atau macam ni nama yang home extended demi home vertikali macam tu. Especially with them, because they have a lot of things that they have to do with them. And they have a lot of things that they have to do with them. And they have a lot of things that they have to do with them. So, the series is that they have a normal picture. The series is that they have a type of picture. The series is that they have a lot of things that they have to do with them. They have a lot of things that they have to do with them. And they have a lot of things that they have to do with them. They have a lot of things that they have to do with them. They have a lot of things that they have to do with them. They have a lot of things that they have to do with them. You have some kind of wave you are not going to be in a zero stratus in the middle of the world. Why area is not going to be in a zero? So, as you can see, you are normally going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a zero. So, zero is not going to be high level. So, zero is not going to be high level. You are going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a mid level. You are going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a zero. You are going to be in a zero. You are going Yang mungkin bermain dalam takut tam puffy yang hona ini tidak negar nampi hana wavy na puffy yang hona setakat ini design setakat setakat ini mungkin nampi hana alto cumulus nampi hana another popcorn type ni ni orang cuci dalam sali kalau setakat itu still who jual tu distinction still height ni na depend ni orang tu alto stratus setakat orang tu ramu ni ni tu betam bezuk ni zinab ni orang tu tin design dia mana orang tu alto stratus orang tu na bezuk ni windy gusty yang hona ini tidak negar nampi hana tu kan design Type nampak lagi design dia mana tu setau jangan terlalu meyakinkan, boleh mudah betul betul nanda terus. Lelau nimbus stratus no, stratus nimbus stratus nasta stratus nampak tak cukup. Ini yang saya susun, anda yang betul rajin spesies nampi itu, kita tanya still tikar nampak cukup itu sana, na more water volume density no rajal. Yang mikit terlalu time lem sari busuk zaman mana tu nak? Strata sentak itu, em nimbo strata sentak itu lebih banyak zaman terawat efek tu minyak bala vergai bala. Dah, yang mana mana tu, no, zinab merit madras sahaja, thamil so yang mitan nubat kizena, mita gini. Ya, banyak zaman ni, mungkin lah summer sih hal, tapi tahun muka sih hal. Banding dengan sahaja zinab sih zaman terawat tu, at the same time dia mahu digami, wahau thamil so sih tan, walaupun sih tan terawat terawat tu. Ia zaman ni vergai minyak bala efek tu minyak terawat, ia zaman ni. Lelah yang itu, especially mojo kawabi, mojo dalam saya wajah terarah kawabi, nama negar hydro power, wind power itu sekali berterkait check betar rumah sana. Besok ni kira ni mesti sokong atas patro. Betam dah itu ninggi ni zaman ni matu, tam strong gihon weather itu ni zaman ni matu high position ninggi nacho. Still kira ni sen betar terasa, dalam saya vertical high itu betar tu betam pun dekat. Extend dia agak luar lain macam tu. Strato cumulus itu sama aja negara, vertikal extender, more dangerous yang hujan weather type of cloud type of ni ni macam. Lelah besok zaitun pas tu mata gigi macam type of dia mula saya macam thunder head, lem sari, thunder head itu, anda ni zaitun, wajah nazar, wajah thunder head, wajah wajah jis teru besok zaitun tak gigi macam tu, ni ni aja macam thunder head macam. 
ታንደር ሄዶ ቻናል ንግዚ ብዙ ማhall ምን ታገኝታላችሁ ለምሳሌ እንደ ዳይነሰራይን ቦታ ታገኝታላችሁ ሌላ ሌንቲኩላር ክላውድስ ናቸው ሌንቲኩላር ሚላው ምንድነው ሌንስ ሼፕ ስላላችሁ ናቸው የተለያየ ብዙ ጊዜ ሰዎች ለምሳሌ ይፎ ምናምን ይያሉ የሚያወራቸው እና ንግዚ እነኛ ያተ ነገሮችን ይያዩ ነው ስለዚህ ይሄ በጣም ሂጅ ሆነ ሃይት አለው ለምሳሌ አና ንግዚ ግን በጣም ስሞል ሆኖ እንደ ዳይነሰ ነገር ይሆነ ኤሊየን ስፔሺፍ ፋይነት ነገር ሼፕ ይዟሉ ሌንስ ሌንስ አይነት ታይፕ ስላላችሁ ማለት ነው እነኛ ያተን ሌንቲኩላር ክላውድስ ይባላሉ ሌላ አርቲፊሻል ካወር ደሞ እናንተ ስናወራ ኮመኒ ሆኖ እንደና ኤርፕሌን ኮንደንሴሽን ትሬን ወይም ኮንትሮል ምን ለና ነገር ማለት ነው ከጀት የሚያወጣው ኤግዞስት ኢንጂን ማለት ነው ቴምፕሬቸሩ በጣም ከዲው ፖይንት በታች ሲሆን ኩክሊ ኮንደንስ ያረጋል ኮንደንስ ያረጋል ወዲያው ምንድነው የሚሆነው አይስ ክሪስታሎች ነው ፎርም የሚያረጋው እነኛ አይስ ክሪስታሎች ደሞ ኢኳሊ ሪፍሌክት ስለሚያደርጉ ኖርማሊ የምታገኙት ዋይት የሆነ ላይት ነው ውስጥን ዙም አርግታችሁ ብታውት እንደዛው ሼፕ የሆነ ዌቪ የሆነ ሼፕ ነው የምታገኙት ዎተር ዌቭ አይነት ሙቭመንት ነው የምታገኙት አና ንግዚም ምን አይነት ነገር ይሆናል ማለት ነው የሆነ ሶሊቶኒክ የሆነና መጀመሪያው ካዋቢ ማለት ነው ሶሊቶኒክ የሆነና ከዛ ዲስፐርሲቭ ዌቭ አይነት ነገር ይፈጥራል ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ሃይ ኢንተንሲቲ ኖራችሁ ለምሳሌ ሃይ ፒክ ኖራችሁ እና ሲጀምሩ ከዛ በኋላ ምንድነው ንፋስ እየገፋቸው ሲመጣ ዲስፐርስ ዲስፐርስ ያደርጉ ይመጣሉ ስለዚህ እንደዛ አይነት ነገር ታላላችሁ የሚከተለው ደሞ ፋሲኔቲንግ የሆነ ደሞ ናቹራል ፊኖሚና ላይትኒንግ ነው ላይትኒንግ ስታስቡ ማይ መብረቀን ስናስብ ማለት ነው ሁሉ ግዜ ያው ኤለመንታሪ የሆነ ኤክስፓንሽኑ ምንድነው ስካውን ያለ ነው ኤለመንታሪ የሆነ ኤክስፓንሽኑ ምንድነው ላይትኒንግ ኤሌክትሪክ ዲስቻርጅ ነው ነው ለምሳሌ ሲምፕል የሆነ ነገር ጩጨ ሆነ ምን ሰራው ነገር ምንድነው እስክሪብቶች ጸጉራችን ላይ አሽተን ለምስክ ለክ ወረቀት ጋር ምናም ስናመጣው እንድንም ይሳሳባሉ ሲሲው ታታታላችሁ ወይም ለምሳሌ አንድ አንድ ጊዜ የቤት ምንጣፎች ላይ ማለት ነው አንድ አንድ ጊዜ ምንጣጣለ እግራችን ውስጥ ላይ አሽታችሁ ማለት ነው በር ለትከፍቱ ስትጥሩ ማለት ነው የሆነ ስፓርክ ታላችሁ ከጃችሁ ላይ እና ይነዝራችኋል ልክ እንደዛ እነሱ ታይፖች ኤሌክትሪክ ዲስ ያ ኤሌክትሪክ ዲስቻርጅ መብረቅ የሚሰራው እሱ ነው ብዙ ጊዜ የሚፈጠሩት ኪሙሎን የምበስ አይነት ካውዶች ላይ ነው ብዙ ጊዜ ምክንያቱም vertically high ስለሆኑ more charge accumulate የማድረግ probability of high ስለሆነ ማለት ነው መብረቅ ብዙ ጊዜ ላይቱን ታውትና ብዙ ጊዜ ደግሞ አብራችሁ ድምጽ እንሰማላችሁ ያ ፓርት ታንደር ፓርቱ ማለት ነው expansion of air ስለሆነ ነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ አሁን ምሳሌ እዚህ ጋር ምታውት ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ step leaderዎቹን ምታውቻቸው step leaderዎቹ ለምሳሌ fork out ያረጋሉ በኋላ ብረ ምንያቸው ነገሮች ናቸው intercloud እዚህ ጋር ለምሳሌ ብዙ አይነት ነገር ምታገኝ ለምሳሌ positive positive የሆነ lightning አለ ያ ማለት ከclaud ወደ ground የሚሄድ አለ አና ንግዚ ደሞ ከground ወደ ላይ የሚያወጣም ታገኛላችሁ ያ ማለት positive lightning ነው የሚባሉት intercloud አለ intracloudዎች አሉ በሁለት ደመናዎች ማካከል አለ በተመሳሳይ ደመና በተለያዩ ፓርቶቹ መሃል ታገኛላችሁ ይሄን አይነት ታይፕ ሲሆን ማለት ነው ስለዚህ እያንዳንዱን ታይፕ እኔ ለምሳሌ ኤሌክትሪክ ዲስቻርጅ ነው ካለን ላይት የሚፈጠረው ፓርቱ ኤሌክትሪክ ዲስቻርጅ ነው ካለን ታንደር ፓርቱ ድምጽ ፓርቱ ከት እንደሚመጣ ቼክ እና ለምሳሌ ታንደር ብዙ ጊዜ የሚፈጠረው ምንድነው ኤሌክትሪክ ቻርጁ ዲስቻርጅ ሲያደርግ ያ ፓዝ እዛ ጋር ያለውን ኤር ሞለኪውሎች በሙሉ ማሞቅ ይጀምራል በፍጥነት ነው የሚያሞቃቸው ምክንያቱም ዴንስ የሆነ አየር በፍጥነት ስታሞቁት ያ ማለት ቴምፕሬቸሩ ከ30 እስከ 50 ዲግሪ ሴንቲግሬድ ዲግሪ ፋራናይት ይደርሳል ያ ማለት ማለት ነው ከ3 እስከ 5 ታይምስ የሰንሰርፌስ ቴምፕሬቸር በላይን የሚሆነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ያን የሚያክል ሙቀት ለስሞል ለሆነ ኤር ዴንስቲ ባንድ ሰጥቶት ምንድነው የሚያደርገው በፍጥነት ኤክስፓንድ ማድረግ ይጀምራል በፍጥነት ኤክስፓንድ ሲያደርግ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ግሎ ያርግና ማለት ነው ሾክ ዌቭ ይፈጥራል ያ ሾክ ዌቭ የሚሄደው ምንድነው ሳውንድ ነው የሚሆነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ለምሳሌ ቀላል የሆነ ፓርት መታየት ነው ሰነ ቪዲዮታችን ዶን አላቀም ጀቶች ብዙ ጊዜ ማለት ነው ምንድነው የሚሆነው ሾክ ዌቭ ይፈጥራሉ ያ የሚሆነው ሃይ ከስፒድ ኦፍ ሳውንድ በላይ የሚበሩ ጀቶች ብዙ ጊዜ ማለት ነው ከኋላቸው የሆነ ኮን አይነ ሼፕ ይዘው ይመጣሉ ያ ኮን ልክ ጀቱ ከዛ ኮን ሲወጣ የምታገኙት ምንድነው ሶኒክ ቡም ነው የሚባለው ስለዚህ የሚየፈጠራችሁ አላችሁት ኖርማሊ ምን ሱፐርሶኒክ የሆነ ስፒድ ላይ ሂታፕ የሆነ ጋዝ ኪክሊ ኤክስፓንድ ሲያደርግ የምታገኙት ምንድነው ሶኒክ ቡም ነው ቤዚክሊ የምታገኙት ያ ማለት ታንደር ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ይሄኛው ዲስቻርጅ ፓዙ ሂታፕ ሲያደርገው ይሄን ኤር ፊታፕ ሲያደርገው ኤር ሞለኪሉ ሲታውት በፍጥነት ኤክስፓንድ ሲያደርግ ልክ እንደዚህ አይነት ሾክ ዌቭ ይልካል ስለዚህ ከሴንተሩ ማለት ነው የተሰነ ፓርት ወደዚህ ይላል ወደዚህ ተመሳሳይ ፓርት ወደዚህ ይላል the same አይነት ነገር የምታውት ምንድነው ሮኬቶች ሎንች ሲሆኑ ለ
the same one is negative effect I like to uh, fan joji fan I do when I don't know you're rich is tough and I'm so sorry to know some of them show you know because I don't befit net my heat up I'll touch you expand this in a mirror in tagging it the same I think I don't let me say show you but I'm again I'm going to talk with much now rocket launch in order I'm sorry the drone I don't know special drone don't see the regular to the sun I have to talk a lot to him I'm going to look at rocket to transitions لون سيد درجة تشتاق على شو؟ لك لون ساعة ليس كارمو مدفع وهاو اللي جت على شو؟ يا وها اسكت مليون جانا نوهانو منهم لما دنا وهامي أقول لك لون وهامي أقول لك لون لما دنا لما سالك روكيتون إغنايس تارد هو هيدروجين أكسجين سيجنا يوم مكاتم إكسبلوسيف يهونا رياكشن نو بيزيكلي فنجنا متفاعل دوت سازي كذا يميه وتو رياكشن ساوند ويف نين فترة سلازي يها ساوند ويف من درم هون سفرس لما درج من تفلق على تو وها تفلق على تو مكاتم وها بابلي هون إسرانا نيا بابلوس ثابير هون على إيجان نشوف ويف ماله تنا على زاجن وها باين ور نورو من درم هون ماله تنا كذا ميوت أو شوك ويف ماله تنا ثمان لسهمت أنا روكيتون بدن تنو نمي أوت أبدا شو سلازي وها تكون هنا ليلا ودا مو موفي ستة وارونا هورر موفي منا نعكر ستة بزم تركوم واي جمانيو لما سأل بزق زي ما نسنا سو ما قدر يمشي فلك سو ما قدر يمشي هذا هو خاوس تكتور اللي قدر يبزق سو لما ندنا دمس كاو خاوس موت أصلا ما يشيل ما نسنا سادي سبيد أوف ساوند ورا لاي موت أصلا ما يشيل بين دارك توبوس تلامي كارم ليلا تايب أوف لايتنينج لما سأل بزق زي دم أنا بتشار لام لايتنينج من فترة لما سأل درايت لايتنينج من الله شو نقول شالو لما سأل جاب يجاب يهولت شيء هولت نو هولت شارات مثلا يزنج زي ينبرو لما سأل Volcanic eruption, I don't know. Dry, no? Minimize them at the same time. At the same time, there is like a commission of charges, you know, discharged past the federal law, too. Then the sun is like, touch the moon, dry lightning, you know. Little or more, bolt from bloom in the low type pallet. You have to see me, you know, I'm sorry. Then I'm not sure, you know, lightning, you know, travel, you know. And then you see lightning, you know, 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 Like lightning tagging Allah chum. Nengga lightning gosh mungkin lagi balas blue from blue no, bolt from blue no. Macam, kadang mana ada kosong ini fatter macam. Besok tu indah zaman negara mungkin kita macam lumsari cycle, cross country cycle mungkin ada dua sahaja nama negara. Besok tu indah zaman history negara tu. Jadi charge accumulation ini tu nampak fatter. Jadi charge discharge mohon kau akan electric discharge lightning ini fatter. Orang ikat asma man. Explanation tu mungkin non. Jadi normally Mereka mihono hot air uplift dia nan uplift dia nan after draft ni mihono kerja awal ni mungkin mihono jemur. Macam kerja jemur na water droplet sara. Nenya cold dia nan water droplet tu. Ka ice crystal ga si ga jo mini fetralu grapple di fetralu. Yang malah mungkin na soft dia nan dia nan dia nan berat banyak negar negar macam soft tiny negar na. Nenya dia mau grapple dia mau dag mau kalila ice crystal ga si ga jo mungkin mihara gitu. Ice crystal and electron will strip out the electron. So, the more negative it is, the ice crystal will be more positive. So, the accumulation of the ice crystal is built up with a huge electric field. So, the charge with distance is built up with an electric field. The electric field is accumulated with the electric field. The limit of the electric field is discharged with the electric field. سازی یه زنگ زمین دن نمیخوانه یه میچه مریاو یه میفتره اومین دن استپلی در نمیمتاو یه مال زن دو کدام مناو زیگزاغی یه سر رامی متا لایت های آتاس بدام سلو فریمی خوانه کامیرایی نوراتی گفته سازی دیسچار استپلی در رو مال تنو نегاتیف اینور جو چون به مودو یزول لاتی متا میکاتم کدام مناو توپ پارتو ایس پرستار سلو خوانه پوزیف ناتچو کاتش و کل آلو به مودو نегاتیف نو so, the middle of the ground surface is the ground surface, the positive part. So, the negative charge is the discharge of the ground surface. At the same time, the positive streamer is the same. The positive streamer is the same as the high point. The high point is the same as the ground surface. The same as the ground surface is the same as the ground surface. The same as the ground surface is the same as the ground surface. So, the high point is the same as the ground surface. لذا نبزق زين مبرك سيمتا من كزاف لي راقو 
ከትሬድ ታወሮች ከከፍታ ቦታ ላይ ራቁም ይባሉ ለዛ ነው ፖዚቲቭ ስትሪመሩ ወደ ላይ ያወጣል ሁለቱ ሊክ ሲገናኙ ኮምፕሊት የሆነ ፓዝ ይፈጥራሉ ያ ኮምፕሊት ባልሆነስ ፉል ሰርኪት ሰራላችሁ ማለት ነው ካው ሰርኪት ከሆነ ደግሞ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ቻርጅ አፕ ኤንድ ዳውን ማለት ይችላል ስለዚህ የመጀመሪያው ፓርት ሁሉ ግዜ የሚመጣው ኬት ነው ስቴፕ ሊደሩ ካላይ ነው የሚመጣው ፖዚቲቭ ስትሪመሩ ካላሽ ነው የሚሄደው ሁለቱ ሁለቱ ሲገናኙ ነው የዛኔ ነው ኤር ሞለኪውሎቹ በሙሉ ሂታፕ የሆኑና ታንደርስ ፓርት ነው የምትሰሙት ሁለቱ ሲገናኙ ነው የምትሰሙት ላይትኒንግ ብዙ ግዜ ተስተያውት ደሞ ማትረሶስ ነገር ምንድነው ብዙ ግዜ ማለት ነው አይናቹ ላይ ፍሊከር ያደርጋል ማለት ብዙ ግዜ ብርሃኑ ተመላጽሶ ዝዞ ተስተያውታላችሁ ያም የሚሆነው ምንድነው ላይት ፓዙ ማለት ነው አንድ ኮምፕሊት ከሆነ በኋላ ኦኬ ምንስ አንድ ኮምፕሊት ከሆነ በኋላ ማለት ነው ቻርጅ ተመላጽሶ ከላወደታች ከታች ወደ ላይ ብዙ ግዜ ይመላለሳል ያ ማለት ኢን ተርምስ ኦፍ ሚሊ ሰከንድ ነው ሀፕን የሚያረጋው አይናቹ መለየት አይችልም ስለዚህ በጣም ሃይ ፍሬም ያላቸው ሃይ ስፒድ ካሜራዎችን ያላቸው ሰዎች በኋላ ላይ ለምሳሌ ኢንተርኔት ስታገኙ ቼክ አድርጓቸው ቪዲዮዎችን ስሎ ሞሽን ይሆን ላይትኒንግዎችን ቼክ አድርጓቸው በጣም ነው ደስ የሚሉ ምክንያቱም ዊዝም ለምሳሌ 27 ፍሬም ፐር ሰከንድ የሚያሳ ካሜራ ላይ እያንዳንዱ ሰከንድ ኢን ተርምስ ኦፍ ላይክ ማይክሮ ሰከንድ ነው ሙቭመንት ነው የሚታወት ስለዚህ ስትሪመሮች እንዴት ቢልድ እንደሚያደርጉ እንዴት ብራንች አውት እንደሚያደርጉ ላይ ስቴፕ ሊደሮቹ ራስ እንዴት እንደሚመጡ ፕላስ ከዛ በኋላ ስትሮኩ ማለት ነው ሪተርን ስትሮኩ how many times ከላይ ወደ ታች ከታች ወደ ላይ ሲሄድ ማለት በጋፑ መሃል ማይች ይችላል ታይፖች ነው ሆነን ነው አራ ምታቸው መብረቅ ታይፖች ነው ነው አራ የምጀመረው ፓርት ለምሳሌ ክላውድ ቱ ክላውድ እንታገኛቸው ልክ እንደዚህ አይነት ላይ መብረቆች አሉ። እነኚህ ብዙ ጊዜ ምንድነው የሚባሉ? ስፓይደር ላይትኒንግ ላይ የሚባሉ። ከተም የሆነ ስፓይደር ዌቭ አይነት ነገር ስለ የሚሰራቸው። እነኚህ ኢንትራ ክላውዶች ናቸው። ያ የሚፈጠረው ምንድነው? ዘ ሴም አይነት ክላውድ ሆነ ዲፈረንት ፓርቶቹ ናቸው የሚገናኙ። ስለዚህ ዲፈረንት ፓርቱ የተለያየ ቻርጅ ቢልድ አፕ አለው። ስለዚህ አንደኛው ሞር ቻርጅ ኖሮን አንደኛው ሌስ ቻርጅ ኖሮን ስለዚህ ካንደኛው ወደ ላይኛው ዲስቻርጅ ማድረግ ይጀምራል በፍጥነት። ሌላኛው ደግሞ between different cloud ሉ ታገኙ ይችላል ያኛው ደግሞ ምንድን ነው የሚያለው intercloud ነው የሚያለው ወይም unfair cloud ነው የሚባለው normally search set አድርጓቸው ያም የሚያነው ምንድን ነው ከአንደኛው cloud type ወደ ሌላኛው cloud ነው አንደኛው ለምሳሌ ኪሚኖኒም በስ ሊሆን ይችላል ሌላኛው ደግሞ ኒም በስ ለምሳሌ stratus ለም ነገር አይነት ነገር ይሆን ስለዚህ በሁለቱ ማhall move ያደርጋል የዛን ጊዜም ታገኛቸው intercloud intercloud ነው የሚሆነው አና ለዚህ ደግሞ intra cloud ዎች ውስጥ ማለት ነው the same on the cloud ውስጥ ሆኖ ሙሉ ፓዞን አታውትም ግን የሆነ ፍላሽ የሚያደርግ ነገር ታላችሁ ምንኛ አይነት ነገር ምን ይባላል sheet lightning ነው የሚባሉት ያ ማለት ምክንያት ምንድነው ያለ small and surface ነው የሚታውት ነገር small surface glow የሚያደርግ surface ነው የሚታውት በጣም small extended የሆነ ሌላኛው type ዎች ደግሞ ምንድነው የሚሆነው ለምሳሌ ማለት ነው ታንደር ፓርቱን ፓርቱን አትሰሙትም ግን ላይቱን ብቻ ታውታላችሁ እንደዛ አይነት ነገር የሚሆኑት ምንድናቸው ሂት ላይትኒንግ ነው የሚባሉት ሮንግ ኔም ነው ግን ስቲል ሂት ላይትኒንግ ነው የሚባሉት ምንድነው ያለ እየዘነበ አይደለም ተውት እናንተ ጋር እየዘነበ አይደለም ሊላ ቦታ እየዘነበ ነው ያለው ግን እናንተ ጋር ምንድነው የሚሆነው ብርሃኑ ፍላሹን ብቻ ነው የሚታውት ድምጹን አትሰሙትም ስለዚህ ድምጹ ዲ ኦሬዲ ዴሲፒተር ቱ ቻርሳ ማለት ነው ሳምዌርስ ጋደም በ ላይትን በላይቱ መሃልና በሳውንዱ መሃል ያለው ዲፈረንስ ትቆጥሩ ለምሳሌ ስትቆጥሩ ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ ሳውንድ ትራቭል የሚያደርገው 334 አካይ ሜትር ፐር ሰከንድ መስል የሚሆን ስለዚህ ያ ማለት ማለት ነው for 1 mile 5 ሰከንድ ዲሊ ያላችሁ ስለዚህ 5 ሰከንድ ትቆጥሩና ታባዙታላችሁ ይዛን ግዜ ምን ያህል ዲፈረንስ ምን ፐር ማይል ማለት ነው ለምሳሌ 1 ሚሲሲፒ 2 ሚሲሲፒ 3 ሚሲሲፒ ብላችሁ ቆጥራችሁ ማለት ነው በ5 ታባዙት ታባዙት ማለት ነው ምን ያህል ማይል ማይል እንደሆነ ታቀፋላችሁ ወይ ምን ያህል ኪሎሜትር ካንተ እንደሚረክ ማይችላላችሁ በሁለቱ መሃል ለምሳሌ በአንደኛው ድምጽ መሃል በላይትን መሃል እና በድምጽ መሃል ያለው ዲስታንስ በጣም ምትቆጥሩ ዲስ ምትቆጥሩ ማለት ነው ትትቆጥሩ 1 2 3 4 ያላችሁ ትትቆጥሩ ማለት ነው ትንሽ ከሆነ ቅርብ ነው ማለት ነው ብዙ ከሆነ ያላችሁኝ ማለት ነው ሳምዌርስ እየዘነበ ነው እናንተ ጋር ሳይሆን ማለት ነው ስለዚህ በዛ መለየት ይችላልላችሁ ሌላኛው ታይፕ ደግሞ ለምሳሌ ፎርክ ላይትኒንግ ምንለው ምንድነው ስቴፕ ሊደሩ ለምሳሌ ከአንድ በላይ ሆነ ማለት ብራንች አውት ያረጋል ስትሪመሮቹ ብራንች አውት የሚያደርጉ ከሆነ ፎርክ ላይትኒንግ ተብሎ ነው የሚጠራው ሌላኛው ታይፕ ደግሞ ሌላኛው ታይፕ ደግሞ ማለት ነው 
positive lightning የምንለው ነገር አለ positive lightning ምንድነው ከታች ወደ ላይ ነው የሚወጣው sorry ከታች ወደ ላይ ነው የሚወጣው ብዙ ጊዜ ስታት ምንድነው step leaderዎቹ ማለት ነው ከላይ ወደ ታች ነው የሚመጡት now positive streamer ነው ወደ ላይ ሲወጣ መታወት እንደዛ አይነቶች ለማይት ከፈለጋችሁ በጣም high speed camera ሊኖራችሁ ይገባል ኦኬ ስለዚህ የሚቀጥለው ነው ሌላኛው ደግሞ ብዙ ጊዜ ባንኛ ማናቸው አትሊስት ብዙ ጊዜ ሳይንቲስቶች ወይም ናሳ የናሳ ሪሰርቸርዎች የሚያዋቸው ነገሮች እንድነው ስፓይክ ናቸው አይ ቲንክ ዩ ጋይስ ሃቭ ሜሴጅ ሚ ኦኬ አይ ቲንክ በዚህ መጨረስ ይችላል ኦኬ ኤኒዌስ ተምን ይሳለን የሚለው ኦኬ ኤኒዌስ የሚቀጥለው ፓርት የነበረው ሬይንቦ ነው ያው ሬይንቦ እንዴት ሲንግ ላይክ ሬይንቦ ቀለሙ ሰጥታው ካሬጂየም ውስጥ ብሉ ሳይድ ወይም ላይክ ቫዮሌት ሳይድ ይሄዳል ሰምታይምስ ትዋይስ ለታዩ ሁለት ታይም ሰምታይምስ ዳብል ሬይንቦ ለታገኝ ይችላልላችሁ ምከቱም ባውም ሳይድ ዛንግዝ የሚሆነው ምንድነው ላይት ላይት ወተ ድሮፕሌት ሲገባ ትዋይስ ሪፍሌክስ ለሚያደርግ ማለት ነው ደብል ሬይንቦ ታገኛችሁ የመጀመሪያው 40 ዲግሪ ዲግሪ ሲሆናል የሚቀጥለው ትዋይስ አባል 22 ዲግሪ ሃፍ ኦፍ ነው የሚሆነው በዚህ መሃል የምታገኙት ምንድነው ላይት ከ አርቦንስ ዲግሪ በታች any reflect any light reflect ማድረግ ስለሚችል all color reflect ማድረግ ስለሚችል combination አቸው white ይሆናል carbonate degree በላይ ደግሞ reflect ማድረግ ስለማይችል light normally ማለት ነው black ይሆናል missing of light ስለሚሆነው ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ስታዩት ምንድነው light water molecule ሆነ prism refractive index አቸው frequency dependence ለሚያደርግ የተለያየ የተለያየ light በተለያየ speed መሄድ ይችላል ስለዚህ blue violet እና blue ለምሳሌ slowly ness problem ያደርጉ ስለዚህ more band ያደርጋሉ ስለዚህ የምታዩት blue part ማለት ነው ከናንተ ርቆ ታይታላችሁ ሬድ ፓርቱ ወደ እናንተ ይመጣል ማለት ነው። ስለዚህ ቀርማችሁ የምታዩት ማለት ነው። ብሉ ፓርቱ ታች ይሆንና ሬድ ፓርቱ ላይ ይሆናል። ሁለተኛው ፓርት ላይ ግን ስታዩት ማለት ነው። ሰከንድ ሬይንቦ ስታዩት ማለት ነው። ቀለሙ ተገላብጦሽ ነው የሚሆነው። Anyways it's a dispersion ነው። ስለዚህ ለምን እንደው በንቻፕ የሚያረጋው በትሉኝ ለምሳሌ ማለት ነው። የሚመጣው ላይት የተለያየ ፖይንት ኦፍ ዘ ላይት ነው። ዋተር ፖይንት ነው የሚነካው። ስለዚህ በተለያየ አንግሪ የመጣ ስለሚሆን የዛ ሁሉ ኩሚሌሽን መጨረሻ አለ። ካርቦኔት ዲግሪ በላይ የሚሄድ ስለማይችል አርቦኔት ዲግሪ ላይ ሰብስበዋል። ያ ሲሰበሰብ ማለት ነው። አንድ ላይን ሳይሆን ብዙ ላይኖች ሲሰባሰቡ እንደዚህ አይነት ባንድ ይሰጣቸዋል ስለዚህ ሬይንቦ ባንድ ምንድነው ለዛ ነው ኖርማሊ ከ22 ጀምሮ እስከ ከ22 ጀምሮ እስከ 42 ዲግሪ ድረስ ካታላችሁ በዲስታንስ ደረጃ ሃፍ ኦፍ ነው የምታዩት ሃፍ ኦፍ ዘ ሰርክል ነው የምታዩት ምክንያቱም ሆራይዘን ሆፍ ስለሚቆርጥባችሁ ልክ እንደዚህ ስለሚሆን ማለት ነው ግን ለምሳሌ አውሮፕላን ላይ ብትሆኑ ወይም ሃይ ፖይንት ላይ ብትሆኑ ሙሉ ሰርኩል ነው የማይተ ዲሊ ይኖራቸዋል ሰንሴት ላይ ለምሳሌ ሬይንቦ የምታዩት ከሆነ ብዙ ጊዜ monochromatic bono mi balo mkhiyatum buzu light reflected be dense yihono air malatsam buzu filter yadergina yemtagnit bemulu red partum bucha hona selezi red bow wem monochromatic bow ibalan malatsam high point lay kono chu lemsali nesta tat lemsali yetinna victoria lake lay tenessa no yeni picture adellem normally almost buzu part of the circle yeyashut no እሱ ብቻ አይደለም ለምሳሌ ዋተር ለምሳሌ ፋውንቴኖች ምታገኙአቸው ከሆነ ዋተር ፎሉ ሰከስ ሄዱ እንደዚህ አይነት ነገር ታይታላችሁ አይ ቲንክ ይበቃል ለምሳሌ ጥያቄ ካላችሁ አስተጠቃ ጥያቄዎች ካሉ እንድትሰማቸው ባይብል አንድ ጊዜ ስዋፕ እናደርጎና መጨረሻ ላይ እንት መንግስላችኋለን እንደኖት ይዛም አለና
So, was a young lady about Sunday, who didn't know Sunday, and then never of the fish, never was a Sunday. 
Ah, okay. Support color. I think. The picture is <laughs> special. Okay, normally, but for or at least. Normally, if San Hero is fat, or like San Hero is San Do games as a negative in fat or to mention them. Some I know ice crystal shinoru, Ninga ice crystal, which must know light and bend their galore factor regalo, especially in the Zenith road in its negative Kaganachu, Wem, in the Zenith Strasmus Negros Kaganachu, Wem, Stacky Honu, the Zenith crystal, hexagonal crystal too. Stack other or good or road type casar of Latu. Can assume you met our light? Medanami Hono bend the other gunna, how the degrees are. Ya how the degree must know. Yemi met our circle of refracted your horn of light, send hello metrus sooner. Did that again a girl bachelor? Kai's crystal mute out light, six seven seven. I'm tagging it. Says he, Medanami Hono, look in the dance five months in a mihono. Look in the rainbow once now. Ice crystal light, you know, white light, parari hono, kalite cansani metal. Lingan ice crystal to Stigaval, especially road type you hone, one under a strassy hone poems, trying to hexagonal honos, flat surface you own, what now? Can a sumato bend argoto, wedden and the iron siota? You'm tagging it, what now? Augmented you hone away, me on a fake you hone, illusion, circulum tagging circulum, what now? Shan hilum to the twin, solar hilum to the sun, so there's a museum tagging of the natural. Calamu zuzem in Rome and the ice crystal or two. Ice cream water uh, light. I material cigaba mat no water system cigaba horn and little materials glasses cigaba mat no refractive index wavelengths it depends on the mirror. It allow you column, but allow you speech and a mirror, but allow you direction of Alus Lazi. Rainbow and it column tagging with them. Yeah, the same one at rainbows if at the rain of Barona Garno, the Zimelson Fetro, and the Zenith effect tagging a lachu. San Hello Chasahon, Lunar Hello Mala. Caraca Kawabi wants to know. Is Angzim the name Hero? Zenavism Bakavisio and the Zenagrimia Gatamachu. Because let it live at Tamika Zakazana, ice crystal which is Sarah. Yeah, ice crystal still like a lunar emit on light, bend your regular choice. So, yeah, the mirrored solar halo, lunar halo is at that one. I think it's on uh, Albia Swallow. I don't know. What is it? Oh, wait, and the Nagano German Falagona Gramatino. Yakadum Aranguan is a high tavano, Antono. Aranguan is a high mehonum deno, buzu part light scattered hono, and it now. Flash lumit out. Saha relachem. Surrounding yellow into the demon of flash outs in a mere no buzu light at two months. Never the might have a lega too. You want to bet them dense your honor area, you honey double. Yaman Cotter Bella, you honem cattle, Buzu Hassel and Mitten, Zaga, dense your honor air tagging a lachu. Wem, but Tamruk both your honor distance lemon at no light in Hedo Pazer, Jim Slemihon, Yangzil Green Hon Lachishan. Green Bicharlem, them sunny blue flash and tagging a lachu. San Bicharlem, and is the Aro Planet to Silver Ross, green tile lot. But I'm ready to wear this Amiga or Francis Tatu, and to wear this Amiga or Francis Tau, and I don't know that Tau, and I think that at all. Gain in the Sanitar of Francis Tau, and to Kazamio or Red Light, whether we would longer wave, whether a shorter wavelength is a care, or a higher frequency care, is an easy green wave blue flash tire like you. Anything. Okay. okay. So, was a Slana Baron presentation, but I'm Namasa Ginale. Bezi conclude Maragan Chalan is a reprogram at China. 
አይ ቲንክ እስካሁን ድረስ አላያችሁም ነበር በመስል ሶ በዚህ ያመቱ የመጨረሻ ሊክሳችንን ጨርሳለን ተወሰኑ አክቲቪስቶች ካሉ ከዚህ በኋላ ሞስቲ ሶሻል ሚዲያ ላይ ኢንጂነር አርጋቻለን ሆፕፉሊ ከዚህ በኋላ በአዲስ አመት እንደምንገና እየተስፋ እናደርጋለን ምናልባት ኦፒኒየን መቀበል የምፈልከው ነው አስተያየቶች ካሏችሁ እናንተ በኩል አስተያየቶችን መስጠት ይችላሉ መረከስታችሁ እስከዛ ዋሴን ማሰናበት ስለምችል ማመሰግናለን አያነ መልካም አዲስ አመት መልካም ይዘ ዋሴ ነው ኦኬ ዋሴ አንድ አስተያየት አላላ አንተ ኦኬ ኢንፑት አርጎ ተሰምተዋል ወሴ እና መሰግናለን ነው አብዛኞቹ ኔሳይንስ ሳይሳቦች ግልጽ አርጋ ስላስረዳን በጣም እና መሰግናለን ተብላሃል አንዴ በጣም መሰግናለሁ ለእናንተ አስተያየት አለኝ ነኝ ምራሴ ሶ ከተፈቀደ ልጅ ከተፈቀደ ልኝ ነኝ ማስተያየት አለኝ Thank you.